Yes, now it is live. Good morning, sir. So it's morning, live. Good morning, sir. Uh, so, sir, you can start. Manav, sir, good morning. Okay. So, let me introduce Dr. Shubhap Brother Assistant morning. Professor and Head of the Department, Department of Physical Education, Union Christian Training College, Bharampur, who will act as a coordinator and moderator of today's international conference. So, over to Kaur, sir. Korsar, please proceed. Can I audible? audible, 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 audible. I cannot open, I cannot my, open video. my video. Okay, okay. okay. Ah, Devu, good morning. Korsar, you have to video. Karo. I cannot open my video now. I am going to connect through mobile. I cannot open my video in, in the in the laptop. Good morning, Good morning, sir. Sir. सर को बोलो कर कार सर को कि वो एक ही वीडियो ओपन करें नाउ आई एम ओपन दिस इज ओके सर वी आर नाउ लाइव इन द यूट्यूब प्लीज स्टार्ट Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, very good morning to all of you. Welcome to the International E Conference on Doping in Sports. Today, we are gathered virtually here for the E Conference. Arranged by UCTC in collaboration with IAPES, PFI West Bengal chapter on doping in sports. I also welcome all dignitaries, teachers, and their friends in this virtual or online platform. Now, this program is this. First of all, the inauguration. The inauguration speech by Jewel S. Santos, the president IAPES. Dr. Jewel M. Santos. Now I welcome Dr. Jewel M. Santos to inaugurate this prestigious e conference. I also welcome all the dignitaries, and I am seeing here this is the National Secretary of PFI, Pijuji, and other dignitaries like President PFI West Bengal Chapter, Sudarshan Vishas, and Secretary DP Sau, also here. And now the conference is going to be started, the inauguration speech by Dr. Jewel M. Santos. Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, good morning, everyone. So it's an honor for me to inaugurate this international conference in doping in sports organized by the Union Christian Training College in collaboration with the Physical Education Foundation of India and the International Association of Physical Education and Sports. Truly, most of the sporting events in the world had stopped or take another route to take place. The novel coronavirus had made us realize one thing, that sports is a part of our life, that even a global pandemic cannot eliminate it on our system. 
I would like to acknowledge the following dignitaries that made this conference into reality. To the principal of the Union Christian Training College, Dr. Saseeb Kabra Takur, to the Vice Chancellor of the Lakshmabai National Institute for Physical Education and Physical Education Gwalior, Professor Sabya Sachi Mukherjee, to the National Secretary of the Physical Education Foundation of India, Dr. Piyus Hajain, to the President of the Physical Education Foundation of India West Bengal Chapter, Dr. Sudarshan Biswas, to the Secretary of Pepe West Bengal, Dr. Sahu, to the Organizing Secretary, Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, and to the resource speaker that will be properly introduced later, to Dr. Anirban Mishra, Dr. Gopal Chandrapal, Dr. Subharatakar, Mr. Prasun Chatterjee, and to the rest of the organizing committee. Doping is use of the banned athletic performance enhancing drugs by athletic competitors. The term doping is widely used by organi organizations that regulate sporting competitions. The use of drugs to enhance performance is considered unethical and therefore prohibited by most international sports organizations. Doping is now a global problem that follows international sporting events worldwide. International Sports Federation, led by the International Olympic Committee, have for the past century attempted to stop the spread of this problem with little effect. It was expected that with educational program, testing, and supportive medical treatment, this substance abusing behavior would decrease. Unfortunately, this has not been the case. In fact, new, more powerful, and undetectable doping techniques and substances are now abused by professional athletes, while sophisticated networks of distribution have developed. Professional athletes are often to be the role model of adolescents and young adults' population, who often mimic their behavior, including the abuse of drugs. It must be contained and stopped. Let's play fair to every competition, national, international, and worldwide. I would uh, welcome each and every one of you, all the dignitaries, the participants, and particip participants who are participating via YouTube Live. Again, good morning and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Sir, opening of this international conference uh, brochure as well as the link, sir, please. I officially uh, opened this um, conference and um, the, this is live via YouTube. Please show the brochure of the our e conference for the research scholar, as well as the link. Today is the we are going to open our uh, formally open our international e conference uh, for the research scholar. Uh, please open the brochure as well as the link, please. Yeah. Again, this international e-conference on doping is in sports is live via YouTube. You can uh, participate using this link 
Again, this international conference is organized by the Union Christian Training College in collaboration with the International Association of Physical Education and Sports and Physical Education Foundation of India, West Bengal Chapter. Dr. Kishore. Dr. Kishore, you are uh, please unmute, sir. The brochure of the International E Conference of Physical Education, Sports Science, and Yoga for uh, presentation of papers, as well as the link. Please, sir. Santos, sir, please. Yes, sir. I'll be um, uh, I'll be uh, asking my uh, uh, secretary to um, show that for in a while, sir. Please uh, continue on 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 the program. I'll be uh, asking uh, someone to. Uh, show the uh, brochure for a while, sir. You can continue for the program, sir. Now, 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 Those who are uh, using laptop and mobile simultaneously, please switch off the mobile phone. Otherwise, this echo will be coming. Sir. Sir. Babu. Uh, yes. Please give your welcome address. I'm ready. Sir. Proceed at the time of uh, opening of the brochure. We will then share afterward. No problem. You can proceed. Now I shall start. Shall I can start? No, no, no. Please wait for escort. Sir, hmm. please start your welcome address. I, Dr. Sashim Kaviraj Thakur, congratulates all the participants and guest of honor, guest lecturer, speakers, eminent persons who have joined the program very much. You know very well that Union Christian Training College is the third oldest teacher training college of the divided Bengal. And second oldest teacher training college in, undivi in, divi in divided Bengal. So when the enormous numbers of Christian schools were started, there was need to teach the students in a very systematic and scientific way to encourage this spirit. Seven missionary societies came forward to establish a training college only for the Christian teachers. But 
eventually it was found that only five teachers have been admitted in this college therefore in 1942 the college opened for all the communities to learn here at indian christian training college i have told you that it was a joint enterprise of the seven missionary societies and established in the year 1930 since then continuously the college is continuing his continuing the studies of only for teachers training there are department only one is yet other is bpa two years are running since from 1938 the bpa was started and in 1975 they are annexed separate wing that is department of physical in this auspicious union christian college i do welcome the person m santosh president iap chief guest prak soposachi mukherjee vice chancellor plain up gwalior i do welcome pichus jain national secretary epi i do welcome special guest sudarshan vishwas president efi bengal chapter i do welcome dr ishahu secretary efi bengal chapter organizing secretary dr kishor mukhopadhyay associate professor in christian training college and the note of speaker manavendra hajjo our senior scientific officer is in sai ns nis patiala dr kiran kulkarni resource counselor of sports and exercise specialist afc doping control i do am is ranjan choudhary west bengal association of sports medicine i do welcome bharat kumar b sports medicine specialist welcome mr charu pogga advocate i welcome dr anirban mishra who is the young among us will deliver council including speech i do welcome dr shok protoko head department physical education and the moderator of this program i do welcome gopal chandra pal internal quality assurance sales coordinator i hope that the doping in sports program will continue throughout the which has been mentioned in a schedule i again welcome to all participants who is the notable sources of this big program therefore i am concluding my speech i hope that you will you will hear the program and will access the program and will um, participate in the program in a very befitting manner through the time adds in the program thank you all i am now concluding my speech thank you sir for your speech thank you and uh, thank you for your present uh, uh, i am personally thank you for your this welcome speech and now the time of the address by chief guest i think uh, professor mukherjee sir is not there and now the chief guest is now dr sudarshan bishas president pfi west bengal chapter now sir please give uh, address uh, the audience uh, as a chief guest before giving the welcome sir, thank you so much sir 
please i am requesting uh, on behalf of dr s kaur uh, to uh, jewelson m santos to please open up the brochure as well as the joining link of the e international conference um, uh, which will be takes place in the month of may first week of may please sir santos okay. sir please okay okay this is our international uh, conference organized by international association of physical education and sports in collaboration with physical education foundation of india it will be held from eh? 10 may 2020 thank you sir please thank you sir uh with dr kishor bokhapadhyay so um this international research conference on physical education in sports with the theme building bridges for physical education in sports in the new normal will be on may 8 to 10 2021 so it would be uh, divided into five categories which are physical education yoga sports dance and coaching the registration link is also um uh posted in this uh, brochure you could access this one we will be um uh, we will be uh, uploading this one on the as well on the official facebook page of um iaps the details for the participation type is also um readily available on this brochure and all the uh, uh papers that would be submitted would be Uh, publish in either the Physical Education Foundation of India Journal or the International Edited Ebook. So um, these are the following. These are the following details and guidelines for the submissions for the oral presentations of uh, uh, individuals who would like to join this international research conference on. physical education in sports this is a collaboration of iaps and physical education foundation of india again this brochure and all of the other information as well will be cascaded and will be posted on the official link official facebook page of international association of physical education in sports Thank you, Dr. Kishor Mukhopadhyay, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now over to S. Kaur, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, Professor uh, Dr. Sudarshan Satpilis, if uh, your no, Pius Jain sir is there. He is acting as a chief guest, so please uh, request him to uh, deliver oh, okay. his speech. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir please address the audience as a guest of honor dr pjus join national secretary pfi okay uh, good morning to all of you and hope to see that all of you will be the safe and uh, good my friend dr joelson m santosh president indian association of physical education and sports from philippines Dr. Shashim Kaviraj Thakur Ji, Principal Union Christian Training College. Dr. Sudarshan Biswas Ji, President Kafi West Bengal Chapter. Dr. D. P. Sahu Ji, Kishore Mukhopadhyay Sir, and eminent keynote speaker Manvendra Bhattacharj Sir, Dr. Kiran Kulkarni Ji. डॉक्टर निशित रंजन चौधरी जी डॉक्टर भरत कुमार जी एंड डॉक्टर चारू प्रज्ञा मैडम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट यूनियन क्रिश्चियन ट्रेनिंग कॉलेज स्पेशली डॉक्टर किशोर मुखोपाध्याय फॉर टेकिंग कीन इंटरेस्ट इन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग international level e conference on doping dear friends if you know about the working style of pafi and if you know about the pafi then you know that pafi is continuously promoting the physical education and sports in india since last 13 years but 
from last four year pefi is in impanelment with the national anti doping agency so we are creating a large number of uh, anti doping awareness program all over india even in this lockdown period pefi india organized two national level webinar we are on doping especially on doping we are honorable minister kiran riju sir was there wada president was there and with the joint collaboration of ndtl national dope testing laboratory and uh, national anti doping agency pefi is continuously promoting the physical uh, dope, uh, anti doping movement in india you know that in india doping is a very important subject due to negligence of players and not having more much, much awareness uh, about the doping in coaches india is ranked the sixth position in the world in doping <coughs> every year every month every day we uh, learn these things that uh, lots of uh, mm, uh, player is found guilty in doping cases so pefi in association with nada and ndtl government of india is continuously promoting the anti doping movement in india i i am here announcing that soon that this year is the 75th uh, independent anniversary year of the india and government of india has announced the amrit mahotsav at 75 uh, we have completed our <coughs> journey of independence of 75 years so pefi and nada <coughs> jointly organizing 75 awareness session in 75 cities soon within week or two week honorable minister kiran riju will announce the formally announce this uh, our uh, initiative that 75 years 75 cities and 75 uh, anti doping awareness session not only this uh, virtually it will be the physical session so i request those who are listening me that you can also arrange this session in your cities with the joint collaboration of pefi and nada pefi is a nodal agency who will organize this session in different different cities of the country like in west bengal we are planning at least 10 session in the next one year physical session it, it will not be a virtual session Where players will participate in the this Amrit Mahotsav uh, event, we will also fund for this event. Some uh, it, it will be a one or two uh, hour program to create the anti doping awareness, and Pefi will provide the some fund for the organizing uh, team of the local organizing team. so it's a great opportunity and it's a great privilege that pefi is continuously promoting the anti doping movement and i, I request to all the physical education teacher sports coaches players that doping is not only affect your performance maybe sometime uh, it can improve your performance but it more dangerous for your health so we all should connect doping with the health and i hope that in today's discussion dr kiran kulkarni sir discussion dr manvend bhattacharya sir discussion i hope that this this discussion will also give you the uh, discussion on this health aspect of the doping because lots of people lots of uh, player फिजिकली इन योर सिटी contact to the pefi uh, office uh, we will arrange this session in near future in a one year total 75 sessions will be organized by the pefi nada and ndtl thank you namaste so thank you
so much for sharing your time and experience with us. Now I am asking for apology that I announced the name of Dr. Sudarshan Bistas as uh, this is a communication gap. Now I welcome Dr. Sudarshan Bistas, guest of honor, to give your speech, sir. Dr. Sudarshan Bistas. Thanks. So there, uh, is, uh, there is no need for apology, Subrata Kaushal. <laughs> Bistas is my uh, senior, and he is a president of West Bengal. He is a very dynamic <laughs> leader. Under his leadership, Team Pathy West Bengal chapter is doing a lots of things, lots of work. <laughs> and I congratulate Dr. Sudarshan Biswas sir. Um, none of the above. Uh, he is uh, uh, always the chief guest of every program. Thank you. Sudarshan Biswas sir, proceed. Thank you, Dr. Jain sir. And thanks to Subodh Ha, Dr. Subodh Kaur. Uh, firstly, I respect respected the honorable, uh, honorable principal, Dr. Samim Kobiraj St. Paul is training college. And I specially thanks to him to allow this type of mega event. I respected the Joel San uh, M. Santos, president of International Association of Physical Education and Sports. And I respect also chief guest, honorable vice chancellor, LNUP Gwalior, Professor Sokosaji Mukaji. He is my beloved teacher, direct teacher, and respected Dr. Pijus Jain sir. He is an, uh, our active and dynamic national secretary of the Foundation of India. And you know that uh, in, in this speech, he, ha he has been conducted a national uh, under-17 football tournament at the Noida. And it is the opportunity to every state to participate in this tournament. We will improve so many games, so many types of tournaments we can organizing under the ages of Physical Education Foundation of India. And I respected uh, my teacher, Dr. Manamendra Uttayaji, today's keynote speaker. And I respect all the resources, Kiran Kulkarni, Dr. Nishit Ranjan Choudhury, Dr. Bhail Kumar B and Charu Paraggo. Respected all the organizing committee members, that is the Onirvan Mishra and Dr. Subhubhata Kaur, you already known that he is also a secretary of our website. He is a dynamic person, JD, and we have to develop, especially in the field uh, education and sports in West Bengal, as well as there, all the participants. I, on behalf of President of Physical Education Foundation of India, I heartily thanks the organizing secretary and principal to take initiative to conduct this help on doping in sports. See, in sports, every country try to put their best performance at the time of main competition. But we have to remember that the fair play is must with the follow the some code and conduct rules and regulation because avoid doping for tremendous bad effects on body. So awareness program gradually continuing for the budding players. I hope various informative information we will get from the uh, from this conference and that should be wide publication for the budding talented players. I thanks to the organizing secretary and his team to take uh, go initiative and hope nicely it will be completed and successful manner. Again, I thanks for all everybody and uh, good day. Thank you. Thanks to all. <clears throat> thank you, sir. I would like to personally thank you for your speech. Now this is the time to uh, time to deliver the speech of yes, our space guest, Dr. D P South, Secretary P F I West Bengal. Sir, please deliver your your speech. <laughs> Dr. Shubhakar, you are audible. Or my yes, voice sir, is yes, visible. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. In this special day, I feel immense pleasure to be with you in this one day international conference on doping in sports for sharing ideas and views with you, which is organized by Union Christian Training College, Bahrampur, Murshidabad, in collaboration with International Association of Physical Education and Sports 
and Physical Education Foundation of India, West Bengal chapter. In this auspicious occasion, my special gratitude as well as thanks to Dr. Sasim Kobiraj, principal of UCTC College, and his all team members, like organizing secretary, Dr. Kishor Mukhopadhyay, associate professor, UCTC Bharampur, coordinator and moderator of this international conference, Dr. Subha Pratokor, he is also head of the Department of Physical Education, UCTC Bharampur. Concluding speaker, Dr. Anirban Misro, Assistant Professor, UCTC Bharampur. Dr. G.C. Pal, Assistant Professor and Coordinator, IQSC, UCTC. For arranging such a mega and fruitful webinar in this situation. I am also delighted that the governing body of UCTC Bharampur Murshidabad College is showing interest to collaborate with Physical Education Foundation of India, West Bengal chapter. My heartily regards to all organizing committee members of this college. I am feeling very happy to be present with our enthusiastic, energetic, and dynamic creature of National Secretary, Dr. Pijus Jain, who has just turned us by his address. My graceful thanks and regards to Dr. Jain. We have with us Dr. Sudarshan Vishas, Associate Professor Vishwabharati Santiniketan, and also President of PEFI, West Bengal Chapter. My heartful regards to Chief Guest of this international conference, Professor S. Mukherjee, and our Honorable Vice Chancellor acting, LNUP Gwalior. We are feeling proud to be with him in a same platform in, in, in this international webinar. My special thanks to Dr. Jewelson M. Santos, President, IAPES, and keynote speaker, Dr. Manobendra Bhattacharya, former senior scientific officer, Sai NS, NIS Patiala. My special thanks to Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, Associate Professor, Union Christian Training College, Bharampur, for his wholehearted devotion towards PEFI. My convey, my thanks to Prasun Chatterjee, Joint Secretary, PEFI, West Bengal Chapter. We have with us four resource persons, Dr. Kiran Kulkarni, Consultant Sports Exercise and Medicine Specialist, AFC, and Doping Control. His topic is doping sample collection procedure. Next, Dr. Nishidranjan Choudhury, President, West Bengal Association of Sports Medicine. His topic is different doping substance in sports. Next, Dr. Bharat Kumar B, Sports Medicine Specialist. His topic is nutritional supplement and doping. Next, Ms. Mrs. Charu Pragga, Advocate, and she is also vice chairperson of NADA. Her topic is anti-doping laws. I wish the, in this webinar must be grand success in all aspects. Once again, thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you, Shubha Protokar. Uh, thank you, sir, for your thought-provoking speech. Now, thank you very much. Now, it is the time uh, of address by the organizing secretary of this international seminar, Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, Associate Professor of Union Christian Training College. Dr. Mukhopadhyay, please proceed for your valuable speech. Good morning, everybody. Hope I am uh, uh, audible and visible. Uh, good morning, everybody, those who are participating from India. And good afternoon, those who are participating from outside India. In this international conference, we have 1,005 registered participants from different countries. The participants from India, Bangladesh, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Qatar are also there in this platform. So uh, athletes are trying to excel performance in the sport. They are just trying to get the gold medal or medal tally, uh, enter in the medal tally by hook or by hook. Sometimes knowingly or sometimes unknowingly, they are using some medicines, which may be beneficial for their performance, but in the long run, it is detrimental for their health. So this is the main reason for <laughs> selection of the uh, theme of the international conference, conference that is the 
doping in sports. You can consider this international conference as a anti-doping awareness program as well, international anti-doping awareness program as well. Today we have two eminent personalities with us. One is Dr. Joelson M. Santos, President, International Association of Physical Education and Sports. He is providing his collaboration. And we have with us Dr. Pius Join, National Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of in, uh, India. Without their help, I am not being in a position to organize such kind of mega event in a befitting manner. And I am also thankful to Dr. Sosim Kobiraj Thakur for his enormous encouragement and enthusiasm to uh, organize such kind of uh, international conference. In this pandemic situation, we are organizing. We have already organized uh, two international conferences, and this is the third one, and one national conference in our college. And this is only for his um, helping hand. We are able to do that. And I am also thankful to Dr. Sudarshan Bishas, President, Physical Education Foundation of India, West Bengal chapter, for his enormous support, enthusiasm, and enormous work during this total pandemic period to promote physical education and sports in a befitting manner in West Bengal. I am also thankful to Dr. Uh, D.P. Shahu, Secretary, Physical Education, West Bengal Chapter for his enormous help and enormous work to promote this physical education and sports uh, throughout West Bengal. And we have uh, in our program, five eminent personalities, technical personalities, you can say, <coughs> one is Dr. Manovendra Vattacharjo, former Senior Scientific Officer, Sports Medicine, Sai, NSNIS, Patiala. He will work here as a keynote speaker. So we can, uh, uh, we, we will enrich ourselves. We, we can able to learn from him a lot of things from this uh, area of you know, sports medicine. Then four eminent resource speakers are, will be there. Uh, one is Dr. Kiran Kulkarni, Consultant Sports and Exercise Medicine. And then Dr. Nishit Ranjan Choudhury, President of West Bengal uh, Association of um, Sports Medicine. Then we have Dr. Bharat Kumar B, a sports medicine specialist. He is a very busy person and he is uh, presently running an international um, um, standard uh, trauma clinic in the southern part of India. And Dr. Uh, Mr., uh, Mrs. Charu Proka, Madam, advocate. Um, and he is also providing us the anti doping laws. What are the laws are there? Uh, and from the uh, speech of the our um, national secretary, I have learned that we are in the fifth position so far as doping is concerned. So, anti-doping awareness is very much necessary to make sports free and fair. So, and we have with us our enthusiastic and um, dynamic physical educationist, that is Dr. Shubha Pudokar, who will working here as a coordinator. And moderator, and he is also the head of the department, Department of Physical Education, Union Christian Training College. Uh, we have Anirban Misro, assistant professor, who will work as a concluding speaker. We have Dr. Gopal Chandrapal, associate professor, as well as the coordinator of IQAC, Union Christian Training College. And we have uh, Mr. Posun Chatterjee, joint secretary, PEFI, West Bengal chapter. Work, uh, he will work as an assistant uh, moderator. So this is in short all about our team, today's team. And I am expressing my sincere gratitude and thanks to all the faculty members, all the members of Union Christian Training College, all the team members of PEFI, all the team members of International Association of Physical Education and Sports, and those who are participating from uh, different parts of the world uh, through this virtual uh, platform. I welcome everybody and hope this well, uh, this um, uh, conference of grand success. Thank you, thank you very much. Over to Dr. Shubhapur the court, sir. Now, thank you, sir, for your provoking speech on behalf of the faculty members and other uh, staff of the college. I want to thank uh, the PFI team and also the a all international association of physical education sports and uh, now the time is for keynote address the keynote address will be given by dr manovendra bhattacharya he is uh, now senior consultant in sports medicine 
He is a, a sports medicine specialist, retired voluntary from Sports Authority of India, NSNIS, Patiala, in 2012. After serving the organization for 24 years, then for one year worked as consultant of All India Football Federation, now working as senior consultant in sports medicine at Medicare Super Specialty Hospital, Calcutta. In the period between 1988 to 2013, he acted as team doctor for Indian football team in 106 international matches. Also acted as chief medical officer for Indian contingent at Guangzhou Asian Games 2010, Delhi Commonwealth Games 2010, first Asian Youth Games at Singapore in 2009, first Youth Olympics at Singapore in 2010, Sub Games in Dhaka, also attended many other games like Asian Games at Doha in 2006, Asian Indoor Games at Vietnam, etc. Now, the keynote address will be delivered by Dr. Manovendra Bhattacharya Sir. Please give your keynote address in this international e-conference. And thank you in advance, sir. Please proceed for your keynote address. Sir. Good morning, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on the situation in individual countries. At the onset, I must thank Union Christian Training College, Physical Education Foundation of India, and International Association of Physical Education and Sports for inviting me as a keynote speaker uh, uh, speaker in this uh, very important discussion about doping. Now, straight away I go to the discussion on doping. Now, what is doping? Doping is actually defined if there is a presence of any banned substances in your body or occurrence of one or more anti violation of anti-doping rule, or if there is an attempt by an athlete to use a prohibited substance, or a player if tries to evade, refuse, or fail to submit at the sample collection procedure, or Whereabouts failure, I will come in detail about this whereabouts uh, failure. There is a clause in doping that listed players have to register their availability in a specific, I will discuss in detail. If there is any tampering or attempted tampering of the, any of the doping uh, control procedure or sample collection procedure, and even possession of a prohibited substance. If there are any players, I will try to emphasize that, be careful. If a prohibited substance is found in your kit, you are liable to be punished. It's probably you are aware since uh, 2012, London Olympics, the entire village was made syringe free area. Even if possession of a syringe was punishable offense. Probably, but you have to give a valid reason for possessing a syringe. syringe. Even the team doctors or national agency doctors, whenever they were injecting somebody with something that has to be notified to the organizing committee. So, dear friends, be careful about carrying any banned substance with you. Even if it is accidentally, you should be careful. Where from the dope, the term originated? Originally, 
though this was an uh, alcoholic drink, it was used as a stimulant in ceremonial dances in certain southern parts of Africa way back in 18th century. And the dupe is a Dutch word. It entered Amer American <coughs> slang to, dis uh, to describe how the American dacoits or robbers stupefied persons by mixing the Tura Stramonium with tobacco, which caused sedition, hallucination, and some confusion, and they used to rob the people. They used to use the term dupe there. In 1889, dope was used, the term dope was used in connection with preparation of a thick viscous material of opium for smoking and during 1890s, this term dope was extended to any narcotic stupefying agent or drug. <clears throat> in 1900, interestingly, Dope was also defined as a preparation of drugs designed to influence the performance of horse in a race. Horse race was popular even in 1900 and to enhance the performance of a horse, some substance was given and then the term dope was used there. If you go back to ancient Olympics in Greece, they used to take a substance called royal jelly before the competition. This was, it was basically a composition of concentrated product of fruit juice, high concentration of fruit juice. That means a concentrated form of carbohydrate they were taking. And you probably know those history of gladiators, Colosseum, where chariot race was very popular in ancient Rome, they used to drink a herbal infusion before <coughs> the competition, just to strengthen them. And in the Second World War, that is in 1940s, one medicine was used by the soldiers that is called amphetamine. This amphetamine was used to delay the onset of fatigue. That means to delay the sleep. So then soldiers can work for a longer period of time. But this amphetamine is very notorious. I will come to it later on. Now in 1960s, there was a pharmacological re revolution all over the world. A <clears throat> good number of pharmaceutical products were available that time. And basically, or originally, these were designed to treat certain diseases. The players or the coaches or some others found that their use may benefit some of the participants in some sports. Though then they started using this. In 1960, a Danish cyclist, Jensen, probably it is the first documented case. Uh, of death in doping, collapsed and died in France in a 100 kilometer race. You know probably that Tour de France is very popular cycling race. An autopsy was clear that that cyclist took amphetamine along with nicotinyl tartrate. And there were more reported cases of death in cycling in France in that 60s due to amphetamine. Nineteen sixty-eight, 
Mexico Olympics. First testing was done for doping. And in those days, only urine sample used to be collected. But in 2000, in Sydney Olympics, first time the blood sample collection started. Look at the world map. It is during 216 Rio Olympics, last Olympics. And the colored area shows the countries in the, involved in doping, almost the entire world, barring few parts in Africa and some Latin America, all countries, some way or other, less or more, they were, one or more athletes were found <clears throat> using contraband substances. Now, in doping control or doping regulation, a revolution started by the formation of WADA. What is WADA? It is World Anti-Doping Agency. It was founded in 1999, 10th November. Actually, what happened before uh, WADA, International Olympic Committee, in our country, Indian Olympic Association, they used to conduct certain tests, collect samples. But they were not law binding or not guided by law. I still remember in India, in Delhi, Sports Authority of India had a lab that time in the 90s. And that dope lab was not accredited. We used to go for collection of samples at various places, various games. And in those days, I have seen some of the national federations were refusing. No, our athlete will not uh, give samples. And there was no law, nothing guideline, no guideline that refusal is a punishable offense. But after formation of WADA and followed by World Anti-Doping now, the all countries, their government are signatories to these code and <coughs> rules. So nobody can refuse now. Now, what are the functions of water? First and foremost is court compliance monitoring scientific research every year WADA publishes annual list of banned substances and it becomes effective from 1st of January of that particular year and it's very important that every player and coach must possess one copy of that why because many doctors barring sports doctors may not be aware of these banned substances because still doping is not a part of the curriculum in the graduation or post-graduation except sports medicine. Medical courses, doping is not there. So whenever a player visits a doctor, he must show the list. Sir, I am a player, national level player or international level player. Please have a look at this chart and try to not to prescribe. But there is a possibility of TUE. I will come to it later on. Then anti-doping coordination, global anti-doping development, accreditation of the various laboratories all over the world, because accreditation is very important because standardization of the tests and validity of the results is of utmost importance. Then education. Education, already you have seen so many speakers, former speakers mentioned about awareness program and etc. So education 
amongst the players, amongst the coaches, amongst the administrators is of utmost importance. Cooperation with law enforcement and other initiatives, research initiatives. Now, there is a huge list of prohibited substances. Every year <clears throat> it is published. Today, details will be discussed by a speaker, probably Dr. Choudhury. So, I will not go in detail about these prohibited substances. Some of the substances are very common, uh, commonly used rather. One is anabolic steroid. These anabolic steroids basically increase muscle bulk and to some extent strength. And popularly they are used by sprinters, throwers, weightlifters, boxers, wrestlers, and some other category of sports. But these are all banned and they have a good number of adverse effects on the body. So it is not advisable, but it's quite popular amongst some of the athletes. There are many other things. Again, this diuretic and masking agents are also popular amongst uh, particularly weight category events. Because these weight category events, they try to reduce their body weight very fast, just before the competition. If someone is participating in a 60 kg category, and if he notices that his weight is two kilo more, they used to take diuretics. Diuretics have got two purposes water is drained out from the body quickly. So there may be some dehydration, but at the same time, weight loss will be there. And again, since urine quantity will be more, whatever banned substance you have taken, it will be diluted. So we may not be caught. That's why it's called also called a masking agent. And there are certain methods uh, which will be discussed later on by another speaker. These are also banned. There are certain substances which is only banned in competition. And there are certain substances which is banned for a specific game. For example, beta blocker. These are used in high blood pressure or some of the cardiac diseases. But it has the property of reducing the heart rate as well as reducing the tremor. So the archers, shooters, they were using these things. That's why it is banned game specific. No sanctions, punishment. These rules, again, the last lawyer, I think uh, she will uh, discuss in detail, the last speaker. But uh, rules are nowadays very stringent. And normally for anabolic storage, first offense will be banned for about four years. The next offense will be banned for life. So must be very careful. WADA and NADA are nowadays, NADA means National Anti-Doping Agency. They are very st strict. And if, you, if there is any violation of the code, doping code, the concerned athlete will be punished first. So it's a response, primary responsibility of the concerned athlete Another important aspect is athletes' wearables. Now it is uh, mandatory about 
the players basically they are elite players which <coughs> were included in the register testing pool they have to notify their availability one hour in a day in 24 hours and the place wherever they will be available and people from wada or nada or nado they can go to that place at that period of time for collection of sample it may be in a hotel it may be in a hostel it may be in a house but the registered player must inform well in advance to the national anti doping agency their whereabouts and if the officials wada or nada or nado they don't find the player in that place on that specified time the person will be marked <coughs> absent and it is an offense very recently cricketers were reluctant to come under the purview of indian cricketers were very reluctant to come under the purview of nada because of particularly because of these clause and ultimately they have come under and it is mandatory and one has to be very careful even there is a change in location we have to inform in advance sometimes it happens camp is shifted or you have to participate in some tournaments or something but you have to inform online well in advance now it's very interesting if an athlete retires from the game and wants to come back the rule is we have to give a 6 months notice to wada or not in writing that i want to come back so that you come in the purview of a uh do control agency otherwise what happens suddenly someone decides i will resume my career maybe have taken some prohibited substances before that and join to prevent that corruption to prevent that corruption that law is there we have to inform but wada in consultation with relevant international federation and national anti doping organization may grant an ex- exemption the person returning from retirement may apply to wada or not for exemption now therapeutic use exemption what is that tv this banned substances or banned methods include this banned substances include mostly medicinal uh, products which under normal circumstances used to treat an individual an individual now an athlete or a player can suffer from any disease so what happens will he not be treated definitely he will be treated the wada or nada will never object if a person is treated for a re- uh, relevant things with relevant drugs but we have to apply for an exemption that is therapeutic is exemption there are laid down forms are there you have to fill up the form two way you can apply if there is life threatening disease doctor can apply anything then a post medication they can apply for a tv but if it is a planned thing like some are uh, insulin dependent diabetic or type 1 diabetic suffering from type 1 diabetes just like uh, pakistani cricketer wasim akram Wasim Akram was a insulin dependent type 1 diabetic cricketer. He had to take 
permission in advance to participate because he used to take insulin and insulin is a banned substance. So for any kind of thing, you can apply for a exemption. If the WADA grants or NADA grants exemption, you'll get it. For big events like Olympics, Asian Games, uh, FIFA World Cup, or normally organizing committee may have a special cell to grant TUE, but the individual must inform the respective NADO if TUE is granted by the organizing committee and vice versa. So a player can be treated if required, but with documents, we have to furnish it with the uh, controlling authority that is uh, WADA or NADA that you are suffering from such and such disease. This particular drug was needed. No other alternative was available. So it was used or I want to use this. Now let me talk about some of the adverse effects of doping. These are most of the drugs used for some beneficial purposes for human beings. But if it is misused, there is a harmful effect. And basically, doping control has come into go because of just to protect the players either from misuse. And there should be a level playing field. Level playing field means all the participants are participating in an equal battleground. No one is getting extra advantage by using certain substances. The most popular substance used is anabolic steroid. Now, anabolic steroid, there are certain bad effects. Acne, balding, baldness, gynecomasia means development of breast like structure for male, decreased sperm production, testis size, and loss of libido is there. Hypertension may be there, hypercholesterolemia may be there, liver dysfunction may be there. These three are quite dangerous ultimately may lead to death also in certain period of time. Increased aggression for female hoarseness of voice and hirsutism. Hirsutism means abnormal growth of hair at the unwanted size. <coughs> now, some peptide horm hormones, which are also banned. Now, EPO, erythropoietin, it's a naturally occurring hormone secreted in the kidney. It is used particularly in chronic uh, renal disease, chronic kidney disease to increase uh, the number of red blood cells. But in sports, some of the players started using EPO to increase the number of red blood cells so that they can get extra advantage in endurance events. If your red blood cell is increased, your oxygen carrying capacity will increase so you can perform better in endurance activities. But it has risk factors also. Since number of cells will increase, blood viscosity will increase, chance of uh, clotting or myocardial infarction will increase. That's why it is banned. Earlier, it was very difficult to diagnose because blood samples were not tested. If from a urine sample, EPO is diagnosing EPO is very difficult. But nowadays, it can be <coughs> diagnosed. Human growth hormone will may lead to acromegaly, some diabetogenic effects and allergic reactions. Insulin-like growth factor will also lead to acromegaly, organomegaly. Human chorionic gonadotropin may lead to gynecomasia. Gynecomasia means breast-like development in <coughs> males and ACTH means adrenocorticotropic hormone similar like corticosteroids and these things tamoxifens and uh, these are not very regularly used by any sports person for doping basically these are cancer drugs but if it is used it may lead to deep vein thrombosis masculinization Tamoxifen is used normally to treat a certain kind of breast cancer. 
Now, if someone uses insulin, insulin has got some effect, like anabolic effects. Hypoglycemia may result. Now, be careful about using beta agonists, beta 2 agonists, mainly salbutamol, tarbutaline. These are used normally to treat uh, bronchial asthma or athletes. There are certain other bronchodilators available which are not in the band list. And these are dose related also. And permitted taking only in the inhaler form, not as a tablet or injectable form or anything. So must be careful about use of these substances, what should be the dose. And, but adverse effect is tachycardia means high blood uh, pulse rate and tremor palpitation may be there diuretics as i have uh, said earlier these diuretics commonly brand name is used uh, available is lasix or prosemide they were basically used by some of the athletes who need to lose weight very quickly. That means in weight category events. They have the habit of keeping their weight at the higher level. Say in 60 category events uh, or 50 kg even, they keep their weight about 2 kg uh, plus one day before the competition and they want to lose weight very fast. And diuretic was a very uh, useful method to reduce the weight because water will go out but it is very harmful also and moreover nowadays it is a banned substance harmful means electrolyte imbalance may be there severe muscle cramp may be there and there is a possibility hypohydration or dehydration may take place there stimulants particularly i will mention about amphetamine there was a time in 1960s and 70s, particularly and early 80s, amphetamine was used rampantly all over the world. And a lot of deaths happened due to amphetamine. Because amphetamine used to delay the onset of fatigue and it was a stimulant. So people like uh, thought they will perform better, particularly grueling events by two different the delay the onset of fatigue even in football matches i know some of the players were used were used uh, amphetamine in 70s and one of the very famous football match one player was hospitalized in 1970s was hospitalized after the match for about a fortnight amphetamine is very notorious it causes anxiety, insomnia, but that is sleeplessness, euphoria, headache, nausea, vomiting, confusion, hypertension. But most notorious is amphetamine is habit forming. It is habit forming. And gradually, those requirement increases. Today, you can get some effect with one tablet. After five days, you may need two tablets to get the same effect. So be careful, but fortunately, use of amphetamine is on the decline nowadays. People are not using very, very much. Other stimulants are ephedrine, ephedra or ephedrine, they cause causes hypertension and arrhythmia. Nowadays, uh, this pethidine morphine narcotic analgesics nobody uses in sports. But uh, earlier, when analgesics were not available, in some sports it was popular to suppress the pain because in certain sports, particularly weightlifting and uh, some other game, they participate with chronic pain. In the knee, even in wrestling, there are uh, some wrestlers they leave with pain. They leave with pain and those days uh, they used to take but these are 
very notorious, but very notorious. These are all habit forming. This pethidine, morphine, all narcotic drug, drugs are habit forming. You can become addicted. And then ultimately, if you <coughs> take a higher dose, there may be respiratory depression. Marijuana and hashish though banned, but uh, there is no evidence that increases it increases sports performance in any way. But uh, after taking hashish marijuana, altered perception of time, impaired concentration, this may take place. Now it is this blood doping or oxygen transfer transfer is not very popular. But at one point of time is in 80s, particularly there were certain cases of blood doping. Uh, it was thought that if you go for a blood doping, we have an enhanced red blood cells. So it may help in increasing performance, particularly in endurance athletes. But <clears throat> The method involved needs a proper blood bank, proper support staff, and you know there is a, a lot of transfusion reactions are there. If there is a mismatch blood or some other transfusion reaction takes place, it's very dangerous for the participants. Moreover, it increased blood viscosity. Nowadays, this blood doping has uh, incidence of blood doping is very, very less. Prednisolone may cause Cushingoid syndrome and other, uh, other uh, side effects. But before concluding, I want to highlight one point that is it's a doping is a primary responsibility of a sports person or an athlete. If you are caught for violation of any doping law or code, like possession of a substance or taking a substance, you cannot say, I don't know, I was not aware, I took certain supplements, it was spurious. These we cannot are not acceptable normally by NADA or WADA. Normally it is not acceptable by NADA or WADA. In exceptional cases, if you can prove it, it was given, then you can have some less punishment, but it is a primary responsibility of there. So wherever you are taking any medicine or anything, be careful. You must be very much conscious about what you are taking. Either you consult a sports doctor, whether it is a banned substance or not. And particularly about supplements in gym. You can see the photographs of big biceps or big, and they provide in a container some form of protein supplement or something. When I was in Sports Authority of India we used to conduct tests and assess in the laboratory. Unfortunately, in my country, that is in India, 50% of those uh, in those days in 90s, I'm talking about is in early part of this uh, century. Uh, even in 2005, 2006, 2008, I've seen that many products contain certain banned substances. It is spurious, particularly anabolic steroid was mixed. So be careful, all the athletes. It's a primary responsibility. There is a speaker who will talk details about this, uh, Dr. Bharat, I think, about the supplements, but must be careful about your way of life, your conduct. Ultimately, healthy life is our goal, not a sick life or untimely death. 
सो बी केयरफुल अबाउट डोपिंग स्टे हेल्दी एंड प्रोमोट फेयर प्ले थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable and excellent presentation. Uh, you told about what is doping, and you also aware the sports person regarding doping, history of doping as well as doping substances, activities of what are NADA, requirement of guidelines for control doping and awareness program, new methods and thoughts regarding doping. and also adverse effect of doping as well as different food supplements used nowadays by the young people now sir uh this is uh, a, a open for all the viewers and listeners uh, for uh, some question answer session now over over to mr prosun chatterji please conduct some question answer session regarding this Speech of Dr. Manovendra Bhattacharya. Okay, thank you, Sobhrat Kaur sir. Uh, good morning, Manovendra sir. Uh, there is uh, no such question has been uh, came from the participant side. I think they have been well versed what sir has said. So over to you, sir. Normally you. for normally for keynote addresses, question answer session is not kept. Uh, okay. Anyway, I welcome any if there is any question, I will welcome. Okay, sir. There is no question now. Now, let us now welcome our next speaker. This is uh, the is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kiran Kulkarni, our first plenary speaker for the E conference. Now. Dr. Kiran Kulkarni is a man with excellent credentials. Dr. Kiran Kulkarni is from Darwad, Karnataka, and holds MBBS degree from Mysore Medical College, Mysore. Post graduation in sports medicine from Sai NIS Patiala and Government Medical College, Patiala, Punjab. Post graduate diploma in diet and nutrition. I H C A Chennai completed uh, completed his F I M S advanced stream physician course from Beijing, China. He is listed on World Doping Agency researchers directory. He is a fellow of Indian Association of Sports Medicine F I A S N. Got certified as FIFA A F C Medical and Doping Control. officer in 2013 2015 2017 as well as 2020 Comple uh, completed his fifa diploma in football medicine in november 2018 his experience area of specialization is vast one so i welcome uh, he also now an international sports man himself he has participated in junior sub junior and senior national gymnastics championships five times and all in india inter university gymnasium uh, gymnastics championships four times he represented international aerobics championships held in vargas bulgaria and so many Uh, events uh, he participated so many events now his credential is a vast credential with him now so please join me in welcoming dr kiran kulkarni dr kiran kulkarni is going to talk to us about doping sample collection procedure this theme is deeply interesting to us because doping sample collection is an important aspect of doping control process so sir for further knowledge exploration please begin your precious speech now sir over to dr kiran kulkarni sir thank you sir thank you very much am i audible sir yes you are audible sir please talk yeah, uh, uh, my screen is visible yes sir your screen is also visible thank you very much sir 
so once again good afternoon and uh, my pranams to all the dignitaries and also i would like to thank for inviting me to present my topic on uh, anti doping education and especially on the part the practical aspect of what dope sample collection procedure is uh, till now uh, we heard our uh, senior uh, doctor dr manavendra bhattacharya who came out with an excellent uh, talk on what doping is what is the history of doping and uh, more so he also put forth very neatly and nicely about uh, what are these uh, uh, classes of substance and uh, which are banned and of course he also put forth uh, various aspects of uh, why these uh, uh, drugs are banned so the major issue of all the or whether you take it for the international olympic committee or our uh, national uh, or indian olympic association or any of the sporting uh, this thing that health is the main priority so all these drugs like are taken uh, are given for patients in the hospital but still some of these a part of these medications are taken by our healthy athletes also so this was uh, being explained and uh, now i would like to take you into the pra practical aspect of uh, what what dope sample collection procedure is huh? so uh, like uh, uh, this is my guru ji uh, professor dr ashok ouja under whom uh, i learned what sports medicine is and uh, my pranams to him also so my aims and objectives of this uh, presentation would be like just a definition uh, its relevance to all so basically we we need to know why this christian uh, college is organizes this with the support of uh, uh, our uh, uh pefi and uh, international uh, physical education organization and uh, and also uh, this international uh, e conference on doping in sports is very important then what about doping control activities procedure most important documentation and world anti doping agency lab procedure so it's a bird eye view and uh, its relevance uh, relevance to sports medicine is anti doping is a part of sports medicine and it deals with conservative aspect of sports injuries along with the know how of the branches of sports medicine just a uh, birds eye view on what the branches of sports medicine are like uh, it has uh, various departments from anatomy to obstetrics and gynecology of the medical college and the sports the whole paraphernalia of the sports science subjects also we have the sports anthropometry exercise physiology sports biotypology sports medical assessment and emergency medicine sports orthopedics pediatric sports women and sports sports nutrition and the topic we are uh, all of us together is for the sports pharmacology and doping in sports sports radiology biomechanics kinesiology training methods sports physiotherapy geriatric sports disability sports therapeutic sports and the most important is the recovery sports medicine so already uh, dr bhattacharya came out with an explanation of what doping is administration or use of any pharmacological substances which are foreign to the body or any physiological substance uh, taken in abnormal quantity and most important is the purpose of uh, consuming these is to increase the performance by unfair means and it constitutes doping so what are the activities like you know education and information as in this uh, very webinar we are trying to educate you all people along with that we have international activities promotion of research activities of course in uh, ima dharwad uh, in my own uh, indian medical association over 200 doctors attended uh, this program and we gave them information about what uh, drug abuse is and what is the doping issues in sports so again uh, research activities uh, like uh, Uh, we presented papers in uh, international conferences then uh, of course you know already one of the uh, keynote uh, the keynote speaker said that india uh, uh, ranks 6th uh, in the world and there is there has been definitely a dirty track of indian sports in uh, when we talk about doping so uh, of course like uh, prohibited substance and methods just now uh, our keynote speaker just put forth about all these things but the thing is why doping in different sports mainly it is because of the strength and speed endurance 
ports which demand high concentration and always uh, believe me that doping is possible in each and every sport and there are no shortcuts to being a champion play hard play fair and play true so these are infamous doping offenders and definitely uh, they are all world class uh, uh, athletes who became uh, who were heroes and overnight they became uh, zeros so basically we call when an athlete commits doping is when his or doping sample contains a substance which is prohibited he uses a prohibited method he manipulates the sample evades or refuses to give a doping sample or he promotes it like even the doctors physios trainers coaches everybody is included in this so just imagine how this physic or can we imagine such a physic in the indian scenario so this was uh, this is one of the posters which i have made in uh, uh, like uh, i have got an approval from world anti atin doping agency and this you all of you can download this uh, uh, and uh, it also has you know how destructive anabolic steroids are prohibited methods and especially i would like to throw some light because already uh, dr manab has uh, uh, put some light on m1 and m2 but uh, gene doping just a few thoughts i would like to put because uh, uh, this is uh, the in thing now like gene doping is an outgrowth of gene therapy gene doping involves inserting dna for the purpose of enhancing athletic performance so imagine how a bull if we if it is gene doped see the size of the uh, human being a male uh, person who is standing next to the bull and see the musculature of this uh, bull and probably if the human genome is uh, changed and if what what would be the effects of gene doping you know so you can just imagine the three sizes or just see the one on the right side where i am showing you a green arrow mark if that would be the size of musculature then imagine so gene therapy is for the medicinal use of course the gene doping and you can see the uh, size of his uh, uh, trapezius his pectorals his uh, deltoids his biceps triceps and quadricep musculature and of course we all have seen this uh, movie hulk so where there is gene enhancement and that would definitely lead to human destruction so again we have a, a topic on the nutritional supplements the next speaker will put forth but always remember nutritional supplements you need to be very careful when you use the nutritional supplements so again uh, we have this uh, uh, based on the list of international olympic committee and the world anti doping agency they are annually updated and uh, it has already begun now on uh, 1st of january 2021 till 31st december 21 so uh, just if you need any of these uh, information you can always uh, uh, log on to this uh, website of world anti doping agency and all must be aware of the binding rules of the sports association so doping control is targeted at athletes who participate in organized sports test activities are concentrated on top athletes in different sports but now especially after uh, uh, corona uh, anyone will be tested any time a doping control officer can come and uh, knock your doors and uh, you should be always ready to give your sample so you we, we all need to be careful so let's uh, uh, talk about what is uh, this doping control and uh, definitely one would be uh, like uh, stressed or uh, would be confused to know which type of animal this is or uh, whether he, the thing is more important is always the drug cheaters versus uh, the researchers so it is always a fight between a cat and a mouse and uh, uh, this race will never end so dope tests are conducted by world anti doping agency international sports federations expert groups responsible for doping control in international competitions competitions and these expert groups are like this idtm uh, and sndt idtm international dope testing management sweden and sndt australia and our own national anti doping agency so this was like a mysore university gymnastics team and i was the captain and for the first time uh, uh mysore university 
gymnastics uh, team won a bronze medal at all india intervarsity championship in surat gujarat so the purpose of doping control is to prevent the use of substances and methods which are dangerous to health or and or increase performance and we also secure the athletes the right to be honest and of course for play play and most importantly it is we have to respect the ethics in sports and medicine health is our main priority so we have uh, three different types of uh, doping tests one is the in competition uh, test uh, like uh, as soon as the athlete uh, arrives in the venue of the competition or in the city of uh, the competition the in competition testing starts and till the day till the time the athlete vacates the competition venue or he leaves the uh, competition place so this is in competition testing and second one is out of competition testing that is at training places or home or place of stay and here for out of competitions we have to uh, we should all know about the whereabouts clause and the third one is target testing overnight increase in performance complaints with evidence to the national anti doping agency or any uh, information from the whistle blowers here if at all there is a overnight uh, increase in performance just 3 months back this athlete who ran a 100 meter race uh, his timings like uh, he was not even qualified i mean uh, in the first or second heats he was out but all of a sudden he comes over he qualifies and he wins a gold medal then automatically everybody's eyes are on that person that just 2 months back this athlete did not perform anything but all of a sudden overnight he has uh, won a gold medal at the national or international level then automatically the our uh, national anti doping agency or world anti doping agency or the uh, uh, specified uh, uh, agency will come and uh, take his uh, sample so that he has to be we have to prove him that he is clean so this was uh, at the asian cup uh, qatar i was a national football uh, senior national uh, team doctor and we had qualified for this asian cup in 2011 after almost uh, 28 years and uh, definitely uh, people uh, in west bengal who are uh, football crazy would definitely know the importance of this uh, competition and just a uh, word savvy on uh, this uh, whereabouts information athletes provide their whereabouts information primary online primarily online using the anti doping passport system by letter emails fax whatsapp as of now or a quick updates even an sms to the doping control manager whereabouts information must be provided in written form to the national anti doping agency for a period of 3 months information can and must be updated during each period failure to provide whereabouts information is considered to be an anti doping rule violation so here uh, uh, some of the cricketers were uh, let off in whereabouts failure and of course even this lee who is a uh, uh, olympic bronze medalist from uh, south korea also was uh, uh, like he was initially he was put out of the game but uh, because of some valid reasons he was given a strong uh, um, uh, he was warned and he was again taken back into sport so now coming to dope, dope sample collection procedure so this is a, a practical aspect of what actually uh, happens when an athlete is uh, selected for doping controls so usually like all athletes who participated in recognized sports are selected and especially the uh, in uh, individual uh, teams like uh, uh, like a 100 meter race or a 200 meter race so gold silver and bronze the first three places are taken and out of eight runners in 100 meter final first three places plus one uh, random one random athlete is picked that is from 5th to 8th we pick one uh, random athlete uh, and even he is also escorted to the doping control uh, uh, office to provide sample and if it is a team sport like uh, you take about a football or hockey or cricket uh, we select uh, two players in the playing uh, uh, like the start list and uh, we pick two players from each team and at the end of the match the doping control chefrons they notify him and they escort him to the dope control station so in this photograph you see 
like in the first photograph where uh, this is at the world uh, military games where we have a marshal uh, who is notifying a, a female uh, football player who had won a gold medal in the next photograph you can see a gold medal dangling in her uh, uh, on her uh, chest and uh, she is being notified in the first and the second uh, photograph shows you that the uh, doping control officer uh, uh, is escorting this uh, footballer to the doping control station athletes are notified for do dope check so here is the uh, bcci ipl anti doping team where we have this uh, representative uh, from bcci uh, we have the doping control officer and two chefrons and again we have this amp asian championship league just in uh, uh, november december uh, 2020 we have this uh, doping control squad in Doha, Qatar at this AFC Champions League where I was the lead doping control officer and we have these uh, uh, five, uh, chefron, uh, four chefrons and one uh, uh, assistant uh, doping control officer who are helping me out in carrying out the doping control process. So here again, you have another athlete who is being uh, notified and she has won a gold medal and this was uh, at one of the national games in uh, uh, karate competition this girl had won a uh, gold medal and she is being uh, notified that she has been selected for a doping control procedure so here again uh, two of our uh, uh, national football players uh, are being escorted to the doping control station at the asian cup where i was the national team doctor and these two athletes i took them to the doping control station as their uh, team doctor so again we have the athletes any 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 athlete for that matter uh, any top class athletes if they are notified they have to come to the uh, doping control station i am showing you this because we always feel that uh, oh only these uh, local athletes or uh, other athletes who are not uh, popular uh, are only taken for no it is not like that it is any uh, even if they are high profile athletes also they will be escorted to the doping control station to provide urine sample so now once the athlete is notified uh, and uh, once uh, he has signed the uh, form notification form then he has to report to the doping control station so the athlete will be asked to show his identity card or his accredentia or give his any personal contact or other relevant information that is about his identification then uh, he is entitled to have a representative present at the doping control station either it may be the doctor a physio or his team manager or the athlete can also have one interpreter if he cannot speak the language then you are entitled to leave the doping control station only with the agreement of the doping control officer in charge and under proper observation otherwise you will not be allowed to go out of the doping control station so once uh, you come into the doping control uh, 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 station and uh, uh, once you are ready to provide the here we are talking we are talking about the urine sample actually uh, two types of samples are collected from an athlete one is the urine sample and second one is the blood sample so here we are talking about the urine sample so when an athlete comes inside the doping control station he will be also asked to take his seat and uh, he will be provided with uh, uh, sealed mineral water and uh, the athlete can get his own food and he can consume it if uh, it, it is left to the athlete uh, because uh, we have this uh, liability or strict liability okay so athlete has to com comply with this uh, rule of strict liability that is if the athlete that is the athlete is responsible for his own urine sample if at all if the urine sample if the sample comes out with a positive analytical finding that if the sample comes out with a, any substance then the athlete is responsible he is only responsible that is the rule of strict liability so he is ready to provide urine sample he has to select a sample collection vessel he has to open it and make sure that it is unbroken and clean so these are the uh, sample collection vessels and they are sealed so here the athlete comes and uh, you can see the athlete sitting there and the athlete is ready and uh, the athlete uh, comes and uh, 
uh, he is sitting there and you can just see even i am also showing here these are called as the birth kits these are sealed uh, kits and they have a number here okay and before that you can just see that uh, uh, kit is being selected by the athlete once she selects it then the athlete goes along with the assistant uh, doping control officer so usually it is a female uh, for a female uh, athlete a female doping control officer accompanies her if it's a male it is always a male uh, dco who accompanies her the urine sample provision will be carried out uh, in a sample collection room a toilet usually a toilet under the observation of a person who is the as the same gender as of you so the athlete is uh, supposed to remove sufficient clothing that is his uh, t-shirt or track suit will go up to his uh, chest level and his uh, track suit or shorts will go down up to the knee level that the athlete has to pass urine sample in a direct view in the direct vision of the accompanying doping control officer and he should provide a minimum of about 90 ml of urine the athlete should only handle the sample uh, and the collecting vessel if the volume of the urine is insufficient that if at all he gives less than 90 ml that is if the athlete provides about 30 ml or 40 ml of urine that is a incomplete sample then your sample will be called as a partial sample and it will be temporarily seized i mean uh, sealed not seized it will be sealed sorry and uh, it will be kept and and unless and until you are uh, again if you are ready to provide that remaining uh, sample then uh, we again repeat the same procedure so now the athlete uh, uh, like uh, once the athlete you can see the athlete sitting there with a doping control officer and the chaperon and she has come out with a, a urine uh, uh, like a filled a urine uh, uh, collecting vessel and she is sitting there and now when uh, she has uh, she has provided and uh, she is sitting there uh, she will select one of the birth kits the, these i am showing you you can also see this these are called as the birth kits so these are sealed and uh, we have a number on this okay so these are what are visible on the these are called as a berlinger kits so now you can see the athlete uh, okay and she has provided about 110 ml so the athlete will select one such uh, uh berlinger kit and she opens it so once she opens it she has these two bottles the uh, blue one and the one is the red one i think you can see it on the screen and she will also once she uh, gets these out she will check the this is a bottle and the blue one is the b bottle and she will also check the numbers here and on this and again on the lids and on the both bottles and she will confirm that the numbers are all same okay then after that what she does is she will uh, take this uh, uh, urine uh, collecting vessel and she pours urine into that so first she will pour into the blue bottle that is about 30 ml of uh, uh, urine is poured into the uh, b bottle that is a blue colored bottle actually there is a a small uh, line here you know in this we can make out a small line here and that that amounts to be about 30 ml so that's a indication and it is about 30 ml so once she fills this then immediately after the, that remaining uh, 60 ml she will put it inside the red uh, red that is bottle a so once she fills this she will be she has to allow leave a few uh, drops of this uh, sample collecting uh, sample into the vessel and that will be uh, analyzed for specific gravity so sealing the samples so once uh, she has filled up the bottle a and bottle b then she will take this uh, uh, and she will try to uh, and they are all self locking uh, bottles they are self locking bottles and uh, she will close these bottles by screwing the sealed cups caps until the clicking sound stops so they are interlocking bottles okay and uh, we have to make sure that the bottles do not leak and uh, and they cannot be opened so she has she will just you know like uh, she these are locked ones okay and she has to invert them and once she has to keep it like this and check if uh, they are sealed properly 
and once this is finished then uh, what we do is we also will uh, the dco will check the uh, specific gravity and for specific uh, checking the specific gravity we have this uh, refracto beaters on this we put the urine drop one drop of urine on uh, this part and we usually check the specific gravity in this and uh, if the refractometer is not available then we use this uh, uh, testing strips also combi pure uh, testing strips and uh, we usually check the specific gravity in this uh, strips so immediately after that we also try to uh, fill up the doping control form and uh, uh, like uh, in this we need to fill all the details of the athlete and of course any uh, if in one week any medications he has taken uh, like record the vitamins food supplements or herbal products or any allopathic medicines uh, will be uh, noted on that and it will be noted on the doping control form if you are satisfied with the doping control procedure you have to sign on the form then immediately of that after that you will uh, check the numbers even on the doping control form once you are satisfied even before you uh, uh, sign the form you you have to put this inside the athlete himself will put this uh, uh, inside the uh, this uh, uh, box seal it and he will seal it see the athlete is uh, sealing it okay then once you seal it and this is a berlinger kit the sealing of the samples okay and uh, filling up the form these are the doping control forms and once you finally fill up this form and sign it okay then uh, this will be sent to the uh, laboratory for further and apart from that you know like just a word on this uh, uh, this was about urine sample now so few samples are also i mean like we collect blood also so especially erythropoietin screenings are targeted at elite athletes in endurance sports the blood tests are done in order to detect the use of blood doping and especially growth hormone okay so for these uh, we use uh, this blood sample also so once this procedure is complete and once the athlete is satisfied and he will sign the uh, form then automatically what happens is he has agreed and uh, and after the doping control the sealed sample and the laboratory copies of the control documents are sealed to a transportation bag these laboratory copies do not contain any information about the athlete's identity the samples are delivered to the laboratory approved by the international olympic committee that is under the world anti doping agency so in india we have this national uh, dope testing laboratory in new delhi so at present we uh, ndtl is uh, uh, not under the preview of the ioc and world anti doping and hopefully in another one month or two months we will definitely be uh, eligible to conduct this uh, doping sample so now we have uh, this uh, uh, doping uh, control laboratories in uh, uh, thailand that is in bangkok we have this uh, qatar uh, in doha also we have this uh, uh, dope testing laboratory where most of our uh, uh indian samples are going to qatar for uh, testing so the thing is once this sample goes to the uh, laboratory uh so in the laboratory these uh, samples uh, the first sample a will be uh, analyzed and over 350 400 uh, medications which are banned under world anti doping agency are checked so if the sample has no banned substance then automatically uh, uh, nothing will be announced or there is no information given to the athlete so in about uh, 10 15 days time in about a weeks time if the athlete do not hear anything from the uh, their sports federation or the national anti doping agency then it is deemed that he is clean okay so if at all his a sample there is one uh, substance which has been banned then what happens is we need to know so immediately if the sample has been found to be positive then the athlete uh, the uh, the dope testing laboratory will send information that this athlete in such and such a sport with such and such a, a banned substance has been found positive 
and the information will go to the world anti doping agency then to his international sports federation to the national sports federation and of course to the indian olympic association because we are in this country same if you are from any other country then automatically it go that uh, information go to the respective uh, national olympic associations and uh, of course a copy is also sent to the athlete so if the athlete says i am clean or uh, i do not know how this uh, sample uh, has been found to be i mean that uh, urine sample has uh, or his sample is found to be positive then he can he has 3 weeks time about 21 days time he can appeal to the national anti doping agency to the his national sports uh, uh, association or federation uh, that he is clean and he is ready to uh, uh, go for the sample b so sample b will only be analyzed in case the sample a has been found to be positive sample b will be analyzed after a request of the athlete and on the expense of the athlete or the sports federation if there is an understanding between the athlete and the sports federation either of them may spend on the expenses of this uh, dope sample uh, analysis the athlete uh, or his representative has the right to be present when the sample b is analyzed in a different laboratory in the laboratory the sample b will not be analyzed by the same person but uh, uh, actually it will be sent to a different laboratory in case the test result of sample b does not confirm the positive test result of sample a the temporary suspension will be immediate will be immediately uh, expired otherwise what happens is if again sample b uh, comes out with the same uh, with the positive uh, finding for the same substance then uh, accordingly the athlete will be sanctioned so now if uh, uh, for example a steroid or a, um, a diuretic has been found automatically there is a sanction of about 4 years or if any other uh, uh, stimulants are uh, found then automatically it comes to 2 years so uh, the the, uh, the disciplinary panel will uh, take a decision of uh, uh, how much punishment to be given to the athlete so again if he has four year suspension and again if he comes out with a, a positive finding even after a, in the second sample also then the athlete will be disqualified for life so this is like you know we always uh, have you know like clean sport if at all you see these two uh, photograph one of uh, car lewis and one of ben johnson again if we run back to the memory lanes of uh, 1988 seoul olympics 100 meter final I, i think definitely all the physical education would have seen this race repeatedly uh, because uh, uh, ben johnson or he became a hero and overnight uh, he was uh, found out to be uh, steroid free that is he had consumed stanzolol and that is how in 1998 drug checking actually it was it was a kick start a powerful kick start to the Uh, drug checking and uh, uh, international olympic committee the medical fraternity they all joined hands and uh, and since then things have rolled on and at present uh, it is very difficult for any athlete to escape this so clean sport is uh, all we stand for so as soon again as soon as you find this you know who is clean who is unclean so most athletes are clean only 1% of the controlled uh, uh, athletes have used prohibited substances and therefore 99% of the controlled athletes are clean so an athlete is clean until he is pro proven otherwise so the final say is clean sport is what we stand for and say uh, always say no to doping because health is our priority so world anti doping agency national anti doping agency and of course iscm that is the uh, indian society of sports and exercise medicine uh, this organization uh, i i belong and i am also the joint secretary for this uh, national uh, association of uh, sports medicine uh, doctors and uh, we are all here to help you out and main thing is like you can always contact us we are there uh, 24 into 7 Uh, to help you if any problem you have you can always call us you can always uh, uh, you know like you can access through the websites of these uh, world anti doping agency or nada even pefi also and of course our indian society of sports and exercise medicine website 
uh, you can always uh, contact us if any of the problems you have anything uh, you have we will be there uh, to help you out so thank you thank you once again and uh, this is all about uh, uh, the dope sample practical aspect of dope sample collection procedure and i hope because we come across with lot of uh, theoretical aspect of what doping is and again we have uh, excellent speakers and uh, uh, they will uh, definitely inform you but this is one topic where uh, it's like you know a tour like uh, you go into the tour of what has what really happened and uh, if you are well versed with this and definitely if you can advise your athletes that how this doping control procedure takes place then uh, i think our uh, message and our uh, uh, this very uh, webinar uh, has a uh, i like a, a message to carry home so thank you thank you once again and i would also like to thank the organizers and all the uh, international the Na international physical education association and the pfi and all the people who have uh, invited me for this uh, webinar thank you thank you once again jai hind thank you very much sir uh, on behalf of the organizing members of the e conference i want to thank you for your insightful presentation about doping sample collection procedures your uh, your uh, speech is particularly furnished with the uh, practical aspects of doping and clean sports and different uh, uh, doping test types doping sample collection procedures sample a sample b etc and it is uh, i again say that it is a very excellent and uh, comprehensive study of doping procedure now the question answer uh, session uh, over to uh, mr chatterjee please uh, thank you sir uh, and thank you very much dr kiran kutani sir uh, for your nice and well versed uh, that uh, is the doping with the speech you have given but sir uh, sorry to say that no such uh, question has been put by the participants so once again thank you very much and over to now sir. if there is Thank no you, question sir i have a question to you please tell me how erythropoietin doping will be detected sir it is my uh, i don't know about this now uh, every time i um, hear that there is a substance in a doping substance which is called erythropoietin now my question is how erythropoietin doping will be detected right sir uh, it's uh, quite an important uh, uh, question so erythropoietin or uh, epo what we call it, it as or yes, sir, the yes. trade name the trade name of uh, hemax okay this is hemax is a synthetic erythropoietin but otherwise erythropoietin is uh, produced by the uh, kidneys and uh, usually erythropoietin we give it to uh, the, our patients at the hospital who have kidney problems yes, and who sir. cannot like basically produce red blood cells okay sir okay sir okay sir so those patients who cannot produce red blood cells so they are injected with uh, this uh, 0.5 ml of uh, uh, erythropoietin uh, mm -hmm. which is a hormone produced by the human body yes, so what happens is especially erythropoietin is used by this uh, endurance athletes okay. so here erythropoietin uh, uh it increases red blood cells and once the normal red blood cell count in uh, the human is about uh, uh, 4.5 to 5 point million cells per cc of blood so once you inject erythropoietin in about 5 to 7 days uh, before the competition okay. the red blood cell count yeah. increases to about 7 to 8 lakhs cells per cc oh, of yeah. blood so once the red blood cell count increases automatically the hemoglobin percentage also increases so mm -hmm. once the hemoglobin percentage increases automatically what happens is the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood increases that is called we call it as a vo2 max mm -hmm. so once the vo2 max increases research has shown that about 7 to 12% of increase in aerobic performance so endurance uh, performance so in an international event 7 to 12% of increasing performance is uh, exceptionally high and lance and strong uh, uh, olympic medalist and tour de france uh, uh, athlete was uh, doing this for so many years so he is a classical example who ha who had abused 
erythropoietin. So this is about the EPO or erythropoietin. Then uh, we usually go for uh, uh, erythropoietin cannot be detected through urine samples. So we have yeah, to go okay. for uh, uh, blood sample. Yeah, so yeah. once we collect a blood sample, there uh, we can uh, uh, find out uh, one thing is about the growth hormone and second is about erythropoietin also. So uh, the, the laboratory equipments can differentiate between the natural erythropoietin produced by the human body and uh, the erythropoietin, synthetic erythropoietin, which has been taken from outside. That is an exogenous source. One is endogenous produced by the body and one is the exogenous uh, uh, which has been uh, uh, taken from outside. So it can uh, differentiate and also uh, we'll come to know by checking the hem hematocrit. Once we check the hematocrit, automatically the normal uh, hematocrit values of the blood and the one which is artificially enhanced. So there is differentiation. And of course, uh, when we go for a RBC count also, uh, natural, uh, I mean, normal blood count will be in between four and a half to five and a half lakhs. But when you are taken exogenous uh, uh, EPO, then automatically the red blood cell count will be uh, more than seven to eight lakh cells. So this is how we can uh, find out uh, erythropoietin. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Now, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Nishit Ranjan Choudhury. His MBBS Calcutta, DMCW Calcutta Diploma in Sports Medicine, JU, Master of Sports Medicine, UNSW, Australia. He is now the president of West Bengal Association of Sports Medicine. He is now the honorable member of different medical commission. This is uh, Asian Football Confederation, AFC, Badminton World Federation, BWF, All India Football Federation, AIFF, Indian Football Association, IFA, Board of Control for Cricket in India, BCCI. He is also ex-director of Sports Medicine Center, West Bengal State Council of Sports, and now research investigator, Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR. Dr. Choudhury is going to talk to us about different doping substances in sports. This is a subject in which we should all be deeply interested because it's very, it's by avoiding doping that we can best ensure our sporting future. Our speaker is now Dr. Nishit Ranjan Choudhury. Please, sir, proceed uh, with your valuable speech. One minute. Am I audible? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You are audible. Is my I am trying to share my screen. Good afternoon. Yes. And good evening depending on the country you are here. First of all, I congratulate the organizer, the Union Christian Training College, Bahrampur, Murshidabad, and the collaborators of this unique e-conference, the International Association of Physical Education and Sports, and the Physical Education Foundation, India. My special thanks to Kishore Mukherjee, who introduced with this unique uh, venture on sports medicine, particularly the doping in sports. And my special thanks to Kishore Mukherjee and all the organizers. And I also congratulate the participants who have come forward to participate in this unique venture. Previously, we started with the keynote address of my friend and colleague, Dr. Manovinda Bhattacharya, and he has discussed in detail 
regarding the history, the good and bad for these doping controls and the doping materials. And afterwards, my another colleague, Dr. Kiran Kumar Kulkarni, who has uniquely and very efficiently discussed and described the practical aspect of doping control, the sample collection procedure. My thanks to my previous speakers because they have made uh, my speaking very interesting. And on the other side, uh, there may be some repetitions because uh, most of this doping sample collection, doping history, and the other sides of the doping are related only to substance use, which is my topic today. In India, we are coming with different problems in doping, but the question is raised, is this doping a modern problem? Is the players are taking the doping substance in the modern days? The medicines which are in the doping list, they are only the problem of the recent days. Manu has already told in, and discussed that from the very dawn of the society, dawn of the uh, humanity, the people are playing. To increase their performance, they are using various substances to enhance their performance. In 800 BC, we see the Greeks and Romans were using flowers, oils, hoops of asses, and also the testicles of animals in order to enhance their performance. In 18th century, the uh, Julu warriors, they used the stimulant alcoholic drink, which they called DOP, and that was nothing but some alcoholic drink with some stimulant substance, which are mostly herbal. The uh, Dutch robbers, they used a thick dipping sauce that they called dope. And it was a mixture of tobacco and dhatura seeds. And ultimately, in 1879, we saw that the English dictionary came with the uh, word dope. Now, question is that whether these substance which we see in the doping list now they are used in the modern days or they are being used from the very early days of the civilization in 1886 there is a record that one cyclist its name is linton he wrote, he owned the road race, but two months after he died. It was proved that regularly he was using a substance, strychnine and trimethyl. Also, the cyclist Arthur in London, he died by taking morphine. He was a good cyclist. In 1904, the marathoner, Thomas Six. You can see the picture here on the right side. Thomas Hicks, he is participating in the marathon. There are two persons by his side. They, one is his coach and another is his medical person who were being supporting, who were supporting Thomas Hicks by giving some stimulants. They were giving strychnine, they were giving alcohol, and they were giving cocaine. When the first sort of strychnine was given, the Thomas Hick recovered somehow, but he cannot gain the full efficiency of his running. Then the second sort was given, the strychnine second sort was given. Somehow he improved the performance on spot. He completed the race, he owned the title, but 
after finishing, he was fainted and he could not go to the 50 strand to take the medal. And later on, he was so sick that he had to retire from this marathon. In 1960, we see that Danish cyclist, Krut Jansen, he also died by taking the stimulant, the amphetamine. Seeing all these uses, FIFA, they started this doping control and by dope testing in 1966. So FIFA is the first international federation who started dope testing at international level. Later on, in 1967, IOC took the resolution for banning drugs in participation in Olympic events. An IOC medical committee was formed in 1967. In 1968, the Mexico Olympic, the doping control was induced in full fledged, but in 1972, the seven athletes were caught. Up till now, we were using and we had the uh, conception that cricket is very clean sport. But when the ICC started the dope testing in World Cup in South Africa in 2003, we saw a different picture. Now, I just highlight some figures, international figures that have already been highlighted by Dr. Manovidna Bhattacharya and Dr. Kiran Kulkarni, but still these are most important uh, some events in the doping control history about who used different substances as a dope substance. We know Maradona, he used cocaine. In 1991, Maradona was banned for 15 months, but after Afterwards, in 1994, he was tested positive for epitin and was sent home. We see the two pictures, Maradona with the World Cup and Maradona afterwards in 1997. Now, from these two pictures, we see that the health condition of Maradona is totally deteriorated. And we all know he was fighting for life in, his, in her last few years. And that's why it proves that the doping substance like cocaine, ephedrine, other doping substance, all the players use, they may improve their performance, but those are not good for health. Now, this is uh, Florence Griffith, China. And popularly he was uh, known as Joe Flo. In 1998 Seoul Olympic, he, he had two world records, 100 meters and 200 meters. Both the records still stand. But in 1998, Joe Flo suddenly died at the age of 38 from multi organ failure. Post mortem was done, but no doping sample no doping substance was detected, but still all his uh, colleagues, all his associates, they presume, but cannot prove that the deterioration of her health and the early death of Joe Flo was due to use of banned substances, that is the doping. Now, another event, in 1998, the stanerzolol was used by Ben Johnson. When he owned the record, he was hero. But in 24 hours, he became zero. And that is due to the use of substance, the stanerzolol. And this use this, uh, of stanerzolol and Ben Johnson case can be considered as the catalyst that led to the anti-doping revolution, in, in, including 
the establishment of World Anti-Doping Agency. Even if the uh, World Anti-Doping Agency was established, still the doping use of substances were going on. Various uh, uh, organizations, various states, or even the personal in personal level, players are using the banned substance to improve their performance. The one of the famous story of scandal is the Balco THG scandal in 2004. And this Balco means Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative. That was in San Francisco. They were uh, marketing and they were supplying the banned substances, different banned substances to the professional, high professional sports persons. And they were assured of, of gaining the uh, world records or gold medals or the medals in the international level. So uh, 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 from this uh, Balco, we see so many famous athletes. Two of them as Marion Jones and Team Montgomery. Marion Jones, she was supplied with the designer steroid, the THG. And 2000 Sydney Olympic, she won five gold medal. Similarly, Team Montgomery in 2002, he had the world record in 100 meters. And in 2004, he was banned due to use of this THG. All these high profile athletes were getting or, or being supplied by this doping material from this Balco, that is Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative. And that was banned, this uh, cooperative was banned in 2004 by the state. Now, there is another question. There is a doping list by WADA, which clearly says some medicines, but people, sports people, are trying to use some drugs which are not in the doping list. So newer medicines are being uh, introduced and they are being tested. And if the result is good, they are using over the uh, sports person so that they can gain medals or they can perform better. Now, WADA has uh, changed their strategy. In 2008 Beijing Olympics, approximately 5,000, that is 4,770 dope tests were done. Of them, uh, 3,800 was urine and 900 were blood tests. But all these samples were kept. Now, all the samples which are collected for dope test, they are preserved for eight years. And in, 19, in, in 2009, when these samples collected from Beijing Olympics were reset tested, it was found that six were positive with the newer drug that is sera and insulin. And all those positive tests the players were banned, they were sanctioned. Among them, the 1500 meter gold medal is Ramsi Ramji were there. So players must be very cautious that even if there is one medicine is not in the doping list, that can be retested after eight hours also. In 2006, we all know the Maria Sarapova case, he used, she used the meldonium. That is usually uh, derived from uh, the oil, that is the geranium oil. And this geranium oil is also used in food. Initially, when meldonium was detected in Maria Sarapova, she was banned for two years. And afterwards, when the uh, disciplinary committee explained and he, uh, when Ma uh, Sar Maria Sarapova 
put all his record that she took this unknowingly and with the prescription of some doctor and she didn't know that this was a banned substance her sanction was reduced to 16 months and afterwards uh, she again came back uh, in sports and is now uh, participating in sports with without this uh, doping control material. Now, what is the situation in using these sports substances in India? India is now high on drugs, but low on metals. India, last year, India has the highest number of failed dope tests internationally. In 2003, 2010, about 103 Indian sports persons, including juniors, have failed dope test. In 2010, pre Olympic Commonwealth uh, Games in Delhi, about 12 of them, six were wrestlers, three were swimmers, and one short putter, one discus tour, one netball player in Indian contingent was test positive. All we know, the Weightlifting Federation of India has also been suspended twice by the international body. So we must be cautious. There are other records also. In 1990, Commonwealth Games, Subrata Pal was banned. In 2003, Sydney Olympic, the Apurna Propat. In 2004, Athens, Chanu banned for two years. In 2010, pre Commonwealth Games Delhi, they suspended eight years. All we know the Kunjorani and also in 2010, uh, uh, Rani Jadav, but the numbers are also coming in increasing figures. Now, India tops 2,090 dope testing figures. World Anti-Doping Agency report shows India is number one in positive cases reported by testing authority. Just for record, in 2012, about 4,168 samples were tested, and out of them, 138 were positive, that is 3.3%. But last year, 4,004 samples were tested, and they came up with 225 positive cases. That is 5.6%, and it was an increase of 3% from 2018. And also, there was a report published in uh, France News Agency in 2020 that 22 rowers of India under 18 squad failed dope testing. Now, the, as I was saying, that is cricket a gentleman's game? After introduction of this dope testing, we see that Ian Botham was suspend, suspended for smoking cannabis in 1993. Wasim Akram, Yunus, and Mustak Ahmed was charged with possession of marijuana. In 2003, Shane Warne was banned for a year for diuretic before the World Cup. In 2006, Swag Bhaktar, Mohammed Asi was tested positive for Nandrolone in pre ICC Champions Trophy and suspended by the uh, PCB afterwards. In 2008, Mohammed Asi tested positive for Nandrolone in April. And also in June 1st, he was detained at Dubai Airport for possession of an illegal recreational drug. In 2009, during the IPL in South Africa, Dale Stain tested positive for morphine, which, which was metabolized from codeine in, in a, in a painkiller that is called myoprodol. So sometimes it also happens that the metabolites of some usually used drug in our daily use can be transformed to a doping agent. In 2010, the South African, the uh, player Van, he was tested positive for sibutramine, and that is one slimming agent, and that was prescribed by 
the doctor. So this proves that all the doctors are also not well conversant with the medicines which can be used in players or not. In 2011, the South African, the friend link, he was tested positive for sibutramine that was also prescribed by the team doctor. In 2011, Sri Lankan Upal Taranga, he was tested positive for prednisolone during the ICC Commonwealth ICC World Cup in 2011. And this was prescribed by a popular Sri Lankan homeopath doctor. Now the question comes, why do the players take the drugs or these substances? Mostly, it is due to ignorance. Because sometimes the player think that the use of this drug is not harmful. They can take these medicines because they can, uh, by using these medicines or drugs or substances, they can improve their performance. Sometimes they think that uh, when they are is change in environment, like when they are going from hot climate to cold climate, or from cold climate to hot climate, they require some medicines to acclimatize to this situation. Sometimes the amateur players are going to be professional players. They think that now they use, they require something, some substances, so that <coughs> they are the performance is maintained. Sometimes they see that drugs are a must for winning. Sometimes for the fame or fortune, for rewards, the players take medicine. Sometimes the player take the medicines or the substances to cope with the stress and injuries that happens during the sports activity. Sometimes the medicines are taken by the pressures from the peers, from the coaches, from the support staff, from the family, or the media, or from the nation. Now, you can use anything. You can use any medicine, any substance, but for improvement of performance, if you use something that is under doping. So now World Anti-Doping Agency, they have defined this doping as the administration or use of substances in any form aligned to the body or of physiological substances in abnormal amounts and with abnormal method by the healthy person with exclusive aim of attaining an artificial an unfair increase in performance in competition. So the doping control started with the aim to uphold and preserve the ethics of sports, to safeguard the physical health and mental integrity of the player. And this point is more most important the sports medicine as it is improving day by day, the player's health is the utmost important. It is the first priority. Even the player is playing in different environmental conditions, we also try to protect their health. Even the player, if the player is taking some medicines with the notion that that may increase his performance, but they ignore their health condition. So, the, all the sports medicine experts and the World Anti-Doping Agency, their first priority is to protect the physical health and mental integrity of the player. And also, the doping control is used to ensure that all competitors have fair and equal chance and that they should respect the laws of the host nation. And so, no doping. Now, uh, Dr. Manavinda Bhattacharya has already discussed in detail regarding the uh, uh, history 
how the world anti doping was uh, formed what are his activities i uh, i am not uh, repeating these things but now this important thing the wada prohibited list the world anti doping agency they publish a list that is called wada prohibited list that uh, clearly tabulates or clearly mentions different substances and methods that are banned in sports every year every year in january this list is valid now how this list is prepared there is a list committee every year they review the medicines mentioned or the methods mentioned in the prohibited list annually and they circulate the uh, amended list in september and which will be valid for the following year so the prohibited list of 2021 already published already effective and it is effective from 1st january and it will be effective till 31st of december 2021 next year the 2022 list will be published in september and it will be effective from january 2022 now in this list we have four main areas a first area is the substances and methods prohibited at all times that is in and out of competition secondly there are substances and methods that are prohibited only in competition and fourthly thirdly there are substances which are prohibited in specific sports and there are another important thing that is the specified substances i can come one by one but if i go in detail of every items it will take long time and i cannot complete with this short period so i just highlight the important areas of this prohibited list of world anti doping agency now there are two areas there are substances and there are methods in substances we found that in and out competition there are total nine areas of them the substances and methods which are prohibited all times that means which are prohibited in competition and out of competition there are six categories of substances starting from as 0 S one, S two, S three, S four, S five, and there are three methods. That is M one, M two, M three categories of methods. These are all prohibited in and out both. And after that, there are areas. That is six, S six, S seven, S eight, and S nine. They are. prohibited only in competition first of all i come to the substances and methods which are prohibited all time that is in and out competition on the top there is s0 these are non approved substances these are prohibited all at all times in and out of competition all prescribed substances in this class are specified substances i will come regarding the specified substances which is specified substances later on now what is what are these medicines in this as zero any pharmacological substance which is not addressed by any of the subsequent sections of the list and with no current approval by any governmental uh, regulatory health authority for human therapeutic use for example drugs under preclinical or 
clinical development or discontinued or designer drugs or substances approved only by the veterinary use is prohibited at all time. And these are the S0. Then coming to S1. These are, this is S1 is mostly used drug that is the anabolic steroid. These are anabolic androgen steroids that is AAS. This can be exogenous or endogenous and there are other anabolic agents also. Now I just highlight because this is very uh, commonly used drugs, anabolic steroid that is AAS. The players are mostly using these drugs to improve their performance. Actually, they increase the muscle bulk, they enhance competitiveness, they increase recovery time from training. That is, they decrease recovery time from training. But there are various side effects. There are psychological changes, there are liver damage, there are cardiovascular disease. In males, we see testicular atrophy. There is reduced spermatogenesis. In females, we see masculinization, acne, hirsutism, and they can also suppress the ovarian function and menstruation. And in teenagers, we see the stunted growth. So these anabolic agents are harmful. Initially, they can improve performance, but later on, they are more dangerous for the health and the psychological status of the player. Just see on the top right hand side, there is one picture. Initially, we see that this player is having some beard, hair all over the body, and looks like a male, but he is not a male. She is a female athlete. So, these anabolic agents are so dangerous that it can, it can change your appearance both externally and also internally. Now, next comes the S2, that is the peptide hormones, the growth factors and related substance and myometrics. In this category, we have erythropoietins, Dr. Manavinda Bhattacharya, uh, Dr. Kiron Kumar Kulkarni has discussed in details regarding these erythropoietins. And initially, the EPO or erythropoietin was on the use. Now, there are agents which uh, can affect the erythropoiesis. That means they can uh, affect the blood or erythrocyte, that is red blood cell formation. All these agents are banned. There are growth factors. There are peptide hormones like growth hormone, gonadotropins, and corticotropins. All are banned. In this, uh, in this discussion, in this uh, S2 category, I must say, mention the PRP, that is platelet-rich plasma, which, were, which are now used at random for different sports injury uh, for the early and speedy recovery. But initially, this PRP was banned, but in January 2011, WADA removed this intramuscular injection of PRP from its prohibitions after determining that there is a lack of any current evidence concerning the use of these methods for the purpose of performance improvement. So, Platelet rich plasma cannot improve performance and they can be used in sports injury cases. Now, this growth hormone, like PRP, growth hormone, and like uh, anabolic androgen, growth hormone uses at random. It can increase the muscle and skeletal growth, but there are side effects like allergy. This uh, and growth hormone are diabetogenic. They can initiate diabetes. And if the uh, growth hormone is uh, given without any control, uh, they can lead to acromegaly. And acromegaly, ultimately, 
lead to liver failure and early death due to multi organ failure also now a three category these are the beta agonists all selective and non selective beta 2 agonists including all optical isomers are prohibited these medicines are mostly used for uh, bronchial asthma or uh, the respiratory distress cases and we know the salbutamol we know tarbutalin we know the uh, other use formiterol all these are used to treat the bronchial asthma cases these bronchial asthma patients when they take, take this uh, beta 2 agonist they can improve their respiration they can take more oxygen inside so the players some players they were using these selective beta 2 agonist so that they can take more oxygen that means they can take more oxygen and they can use this oxygen to improve their performance so all beta 2 agonists are banned but these band is dose related if these uh, uh, beta 2 agonists they are taken in inhalation form that is not under purview of topi but still this is dose related that means when the salbutamol is within uh, 1600 microgram per day or formiterol 54 microgram per day or salmetrol 200 microgram per day these are allowed but over this it is not allowed and also if in the urine concentration of salbutamol is more than 100 nanogram per milliliter or for metal more than 40 nanogram per milliliter they are taken as aaf that means adverse analytic findings in that case that player is asked to appear to the disciplinary committee to prove that this player has not taken these beta 2 agonists to improve their performance so in that case they have to submit the doctor's prescription the lung function test report and other supportive evidence so that they can prove that these beta 2 agonists were not taken to improve their performance so the players who are taking uh, uh, these uh, beta 2 agonists the inhalers they must be cautious that they must keep the doctor's prescription the supportive documents always in hand so that they can prove if they are asked to submit this form and also they can submit the TEV that is therapeutic use exams and that will come later on to support their use and this may prevent them to get it to get minimum or no doping adverse reactions now next uh, the s4 as the hormones and metabolic modulators here there are so many hormones but i uh, uh, to go in details of all the four categories will be very lengthy and insulin is in this category now insulin has a good capacity which acts like a growth hormone it can improve performance also so if the player is taking insulin he should apply for this therapeutic use exemption and he should keep all the records and the doctor's prescription in hand so that they can prove that this insulin was given for his treatment not to improve the performance next comes the s5 the diuretics and other masking agents now question arises what are masking agents <clears throat> now mm, due to corona all we are using the mask that is face mask to protect ourselves from external uh, aerosols that uh, so that they cannot uh, come to our respiratory passage players also 
use the masking agents. Masking agent that means suppose they are taking one anabolic androgen. That is, they are taking one uh, anabolic steroid or doping agent. Now, uh, if they take some diuretic, suppose the uh, game is on seven days after. So they take this uh, uh, androgen or the steroid uh, seven days before. And after four or five days, after five days, they started using this diuretic so that the uh, medicines which have been taken, they can be excreted with the urine. And these are the diuretics and these are, these are labeled as masking agents. So masking agents are different kinds. They may be diuretics that, uh, that initiates more urine and they also have the probenicid. Probenicid, it, it uh, helps to eliminate some doping material easily from the body. There are also finasteride and also there are plasma expander like albumin. So if the player is taking these diuretics, probenicid or finasteride or taking albumin, uh, that is dextran, that are used for medical purposes, they should apply for TV. But one caution is that if these diuretics or these masking agents are detected, along with there is one sub-threshold level of other doping agents, they is a serious doping offense and the player is suspended and legal action is taken for this player. Now coming to some methods. There is a manipulation of blood and blood component. All we know about the blood doping. What happens in this blood doping? There are sequential withdrawal. Suppose a player for last uh, two months, he uh, two months before he uh, withdrawal his own blood, and that was concentrated. Then that is preserved. After um, two or three occasions, he uh, all concentrated blood material was preserved in the refrigerator. And after just a few months, just before the event, they reinfused this whole blood or the blood component again in the same player. And this is blood doping. This is banned. The people were thinking that when they were using their own blood, that cannot be detected. But there are methods, there are techniques. Now we can detect whether the player has done or used his own blood as blood doping. There are other uses like uh, manipulation of blood and blood component. That is the enhancement of oxygen transfer. Hemoglobin products uh, like hemoglobin based oxygen carriers, that is called HBOC, these improve the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. And this is also banned in the sports person. Now, again, there is another category that is M2, that is chemical and physical manipulation. Here, there are attempts that uh, player we have seen and there is recorded that the, when the player goes to uh, give the sample, urine sample, they give sample from catheters. Dr. Kiran Kulkarni has uh, mentioned and he has shown one picture that uh, the player, the female player, is given is giving the urine sample and one female uh, attendant or the saffrons or the tissue is observing directly where from the urine is coming because there are recorded in the history not in the history there are records that the player they kept one catheter that is full of urine of other player in the undergarment. So when they went for giving sample, 
they gave the samples from that catheterized sample. So from they, uh, that, that catheter was hidden under uh, these undergarments and he or she supplied that uh, urine sample from that catheter. So this is very offense and this is uh, tampering or attempting to tamper. And sometimes the player uses some proteases. Protease means these are some enzymes. If this protease enzyme is mixed with the uh, urine sample that is collected in the vessel, that changes the character of the urine. So doping test is not possible to detect the doping, sub doping item. It is seen that the player under their uh, nails, some grains of these proteas were there. And when they collected the urine, they dipped the finger in the, inside the urine so that the uh, uh, proben so that the protease that was hidden under uh, his or her nail that mixes with the urine sample and the whole urine was adulterated with this protease and the sample collection was uh, not proper. So recently, the change in the water procedure is that while the patient or the player will go to give sample he must wash his hand properly and he will keep the urine collected sample over his head so that the finger cannot be dipped in, inside this container. Again, their uh, intravenous infusions are prohibited and more than uh, injections with a simple syringe are not prohibited as a method. But if the volume is a, uh, more than 100 ml, not 15, 50 ml, that is, uh, that is a fault, that is a defect in my slide. So when it exceeds 100 ml, that is a doping offense. But sequential withdrawal, manipulation, reinfusion of whole blood that I have already told, as in the blood, uh, the blood doping is also in this chemical and physical manipulation. Now, the latest is the gene doping or the cell doping. Uh, Dr. Mano has already told the, how this gene doping is now done. And I do not go in details of, uh, in this category, but I, I can show you one uh, research paper which shows that uh, on the left side is a control mice. And in the middle, there is a dominant negative sample and another is the most positive sample. The last two were treated with the gene therapy. And we just see that how these muscle uh, condition changes, the increase in volume, also they are or increase in strength. And also in the top, the physical appearance also changed due to this gene doping. But now gene doping, we are using uh, different uh, players are using different gene doping items that is mentioned here of the myostatin, SARM, and VEGF. These are mostly used by the sports persons. Now, coming to the uh, S6. Now, after S5, this X6, 7, 8, and 9, they are the uh, items, those are prohibited only in competition. Stimulants, they are uh, prohibited. They are of two categories, non-specified stimulant and specified stimulants. But exceptions are clonidine and imidazole derivatives for dermatological use, nasal or ophthalmic use. They are exceptions, they can be used but those stimulants are under 2021 monitoring program. That means if we see these stimulants in one sample, that player will be monitored for uh, coming uh, one year or two year, so that the, his or her blood sample will be tested frequently to prove that whether this is physiological or it is uh, intentional, 
the player has taken these stimulus to improve their performance. Now, in the H7 category, there are narcotics. These are also prohibited in competition. And these are different narcotics I have mentioned here. And players should not use the narcotics and, uh, in competition. They can be used out of competition. That means when there is no game, they can be used by the prescription of the doctor. But in competition, these uh, narcotics are not used not allowed. Now, in the uh, eight category are the cannabinoids. They are also prohibited in competition. All natural and synthetic cannabinoids are prohibited, like cannabis or THC, that is tetrahydrocannabinols, and synthetic cannabinoids that mimic the effect of THC. Only exception is cannabidiol. These if uh, this is used, this is exemption, and this is not in the doping list. But all prohibited substances in these cases are specified substances. And substance abuse in this section are THC and cannabinoids. I will come regarding these specified substances later on, and the substance of abuse I will discuss in detail after this slide. Now, in the S9 are the glucocorticoids or glucocorticosteroids. And this is also prohibited in competition. Glucocorticoids are prohibited when administered by oral, IV, IM, or rectal use. In accordance with the uh, international standard TUV, a declaration of use must be completed by a player for these glucocorticoids by intramuscular, periarticular, peritendinous, epidural, intradermal, or inhalation route, except as noted below, that is in the topical preparation. That is when it is used as topical solutions for oral, buccal, or dermatological use. Now, uh, I must mention a uh, few things here. Suppose one player is injured, then uh, he requires some intra-articular injection of corticosteroid. If that corticosteroid is given out of competition, that is when the player is not playing, that is allowed. But in competition, that is not allowed. But there are some things which we must keep in mind that if Suppose one player has taken this glucocorticoid two months before. Due to his internal uh, elimination system, that is uh, when uh, the, uh, the drug is not eliminated from the body in two months, his urine or blood shows these glucocorticoids. So he will be asked for clarification how these glucocorticoids came during the testing. So it is better to give the declaration that is in form 01, the player shall mention that he has taken glucocorticoid injection or local steroid injection for the treatment for which the doctor's prescription, the date, the dose, and the route of administration were clearly mentioned. So for glucocorticoids, Although it is prohibited only in competition, the players should be very cautious when they were giving out of competition. Now, these are the newer substances which are coming and uh, some of them has already been uh, included in the doping list. Now, coming to the specified and non-specified, all prohibited substances, shall be specified substance except as identified on the prohibited list. Now, in the 2021, 2021, the prohibited list, there is a new uh, system that in every category, starting from S0 to S9, and starting from M1 to M3, 
it is depends on whether these are specified or not specified so why this is mentioned this specified substance and method should not in any way be considered less important or less dangerous than other doping substance or method rather they are substances and methods which are more likely to have been consumed or used by an athlete for a purpose other than enhancement of sport performance so this area must be cleared properly because sometimes the player uses some medicines or some drugs knowingly or unknowingly that can be detected in the urine samples but other than the s2 that is anabolic steroid and the hormones all other category of drugs and substances are in the doping list they are as specified substances but except this an s1 and s2 s2 s1 s2 group then that means the anabolic steroids and the hormones they are not specified substances if the player is positive with the specified substance they can mention uh, that they, are, they can declare that that subject that substance was taken not for improvement of performance but for other purposes like social purpose or that is used for their uh, other treatment purpose so in that case they can be excused from doping uh, sanctions now substance of abuse substance of abuse this is most important term the substance of abuse are substances that are identified as such because they are frequently abused in socially in the uh, other recreation purpose that is outside the context of the sport the following are designated substances of abuse the four drugs are mentioned one is cocaine next is heroin then is mdma that is stashi and the thc actually these four uh, items the four substances are frequently used in some social or recreation events in in different countries so these are uh, substances of abuse but if the player is detected during the testing these uh, substances abuse he should be uh, called for uh, explanation and he if it is proved that it is not for the improvement of performance it was due to some social event or some recreation event outside sports activity but this player should be monitored properly and if it is proved that substance of abuse was used for this to improve the performance the player will be sanctioned now uh, there is uh, afterwards there is a detailed section on this uh, detail discussion on nutrition supplement i will not discuss in detail but one thing i must uh, i must uh, mention that survey has suggested that one in four of these nutrition supplements has positive doping substances and they are positive in uh, dop test has been detected so if if there is any doubt the player should not take this nutrition supplement i must uh, mention uh, regarding uh, two areas that is ayurveda and homeopathy ayurveda and homeopathy have stood the test of time people's perception is that they are effective and safe a good men take dabur or sona chandi chaban pras but the fact is that the ingredients are unknown no effective product labeling and not recognized by fda or other drug agencies that they can prove that there is nothing uh, in these uh, products which are in the doping list regarding homeopathy uh, upal taranga the sri lanka opening batsman was tested positive for prednisolone during icc world cup 2011 and it was presumed that his banned substance came 
from his homeopathy prescription by a popular Sri Lankan homeopath or treatment for the treatment of bronchitis. Sir, you are not audible, sir. You are not audible. Sir, you are not audible. Sir, you are not audible. Sir, may I request? Hello. 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 Uh, may ah, I... Sir, bully. You are not audible, sir. Hello. So, may what I request? Yes, yes. Hello. 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 So may, I request, may I request Dr. Shubhra Kaur to proceed for the next speaker? Thank you, everybody. We are lagging behind uh, in time so i am very pleased to welcome our next speaker dr bharat kumar b mbbs pg dsm sports medicine msc dietics sports medicine specialist For our speaker today, Dr. Bharat Kumar B is one of the best speakers in the country and has been invited by several prestigious universities to share his ideas. He is possessing an outstanding profile summary that is MBBS doctor with postgraduate in sports medicine, total work experience more than 11 years and more than nine years in sports medicine field founder uh, and director of Kinesis Sports Clinic, sports medicine doctor at Sports Authority of India, certified LCHF ketogenesis treatment of specialist nutrition network, certified basic life support provider in American Health Association, certified team physician FIFA, and also certified doping control officer, international doping test and management. Now he is uh, doing some excellent work in Sports of India, which is related to patient care, academics, administrative and current roles and uh, some responsibilities he also done in Kinesis Sports Clinic with excellent credentials. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Bharat Kumar B. Dr. Bharat Kumar is going to talk to us about nutritional supplement and doping. This theme is deeply interesting to us because nutritional supplement and doping both aspects are nowadays intensively involved with sports. Now I welcome Dr. Bharat Kumar B. 
to deliver us with a great and excellent speech sir please proceed with your speech dr bharat kumar b please sir thank you dr uh, sr for the wonderful uh, introduction so i am proud to be talking in front of uh, my teacher dr uh, Manavendra Bhattacharya and my senior Dr. Kiran Kumar Kulkarni, who has spoken earlier. And to be honest, I am wondering should I even talk after all the detailed uh, uh, discussion uh, with Dr. Nishit. So his was a very very long and a detailed one, while I have a very very short uh, thing to talk. so in the interest of time uh, let's uh, proceed so i will be sharing my screen shortly so just a few corrections over here i am no longer associated with the sports authority of india i am uh, uh, the founder and director of uh, kinesis uh, sports clinic uh, where we deal with uh, everything related to sports and i'm also the founder director of uh, medifit clinic where we reverse uh, medical disorders with nutrition exercise and uh, lifestyle so that is we are pioneering in that and the topic today given to me was nutritional supplements and doping so so there are a lot of things very obvious about uh, uh, this particular topic so i would uh, like to focus on uh i mean the flow will be like this so we're looking at the problem then we are looking at the most common nutritional supplements that the athletes use and we'll have a look at the most common contaminants that come into the supplements and what do the stats say and there are do's and don'ts and we'll move quickly to the question and answers so the reason why i uh highlighted the do's and don'ts in the question and answer is uh, that is where the solution lies let's not focus much on the problem so let's focus on how do we implement the solutions uh, so you know the problem starts uh, uh at a different level we all think uh, it is just the uh adulteration of uh, substances uh, which is responsible for doping right but many a times it can be intentional now when i was preparing this ppt there were a lot of uh, uh, uh present i mean uh, the papers that i came across wherein there was there were episodes of intentional doping now why do we need an intentional doping now when the basic sarin trite that is when we really know, uh, need an intentional doping to cover up for all the uh, lacunae that we have created now to since many of us are from many walks of life now uh, this basically applies at the grassroots level now when there is an improper talent that is being identified now uh, even uh, in our country there are really no uh, um preset guidelines uh for talent identification and at least definitely not backed by science we are using um the uh, i mean of course maybe uh, it is there in the uh, indian uh, uh, military where we have a lot of uh, research data but uh, in the sports scenario we don't have much of uh, data which says uh, which sets the um the timings or the jump heights or such norms so when the talent is not properly identified then it is uh, coupled with unscientific training so there were i mean coaches uh, whom we have interacted prior who really did not have much of uh, uh, science uh, or sports science backup behind their training so it was coaching as we know is more of a science and an art now how we deliver the science uh, and apply the science practically is an art but definitely it is science so there was definitely no focus on uh, recovery and adaptations which are very very vital for the uh, performance improvement 
and of course uh, there were crazy goal settings now if you want the athlete to peak four times in a year it is definitely not possible so the so goal setting has to be smart so we all know the uh, details of the acronym smart so the goal setting has to be uh, simple and realistic and achievable and so on and uh, definitely there is this uh, element of inadequate nutrition and uh, thereby uh, reliance on supplements and then there is this doping issue so as we say uh, you cannot outrun a bad diet so a bad diet cannot uh, really replace by nutrition uh, however uh, good they are so the increased reliance on uh, the supplements has led to the adulteration of the doping supplement i mean the nutritional supplements uh, may be on purpose or may not be on purpose so uh, unfortunately since we do not have indian data we will have to utilize the united states data for uh, our talk uh, today so uh, most of the athletes take uh, multivitamins uh, and uh, many things like proteins and omega 3 fatty acids and many other things in the form of uh, fat burners or uh, adaptogens or uh, to improve uh, recovery or to sleep better or to optimize uh, their health and so on even without knowing what they really do so and many times it is a cocktail of uh, uh supplements now uh, uh, during one of the room visits uh, uh, as a surprise visit that we used to conduct uh, for anti do as a part of anti doping procedure so we realized that there was a table which was about 3 uh, feet by 4 feet which was filled with supplements there were like hundreds small boxes of uh, uh, maybe vitamin c vitamin e vitamin a magnesium zinc and uh, probiotics iron and so on i mean you name it the person had it he is uh, i mean he was an uh, ex olympic athlete i mean he has represented india in the olympics but uh, uh, yes of course not achieved a medal definitely so these are the most common uh, supplements then when it comes to the constituents uh, so uh, branch chain amino acids are used as an anti catabolic agent uh, wherein uh, it prevents the breakdown of muscles and uh, promotes uh, the anabolism while carnitin is uh, definitely used as a fat burner when it in reality it is a, a fat transporter only now cla uh, uh, creatine and glutamine uh, are used in the bodybuilding arena and uh, proteins are of course uh, every day uh, the athlete you athletes use proteins now there are few things like saw palmetto and triple s uh, which are used to improve the uh, testosterone levels uh, in male athletes so which again contributes to uh, improvement in the body composition in the form of increasing the muscle mass and decreasing the fat percentage now uh, this being said uh, the most common adult trends are uh, the anabolic uh, steroids now so how do we recognize it uh, uh, most of the things which end with uh, iol or one uh, are anabolic steroids so unless of course uh, the people who start naming them uh, stop naming them this way so we recognize most of these uh, as uh, something that Uh, we have come across no testosterone and uh, dhea are natural uh, steroids which are uh, available in the body but the rest of course are uh, uh, synthetic steroids and there are of course a few stimulants so the most commonly uh, commonly available adult trends are either anabolic steroids or uh, stimulants now for example pseudoephedrine and ephedrine are stimulants and of course caffeine is again uh, a stimulant now even uh, when we go through the uh, game wise uh, stats uh, anabolic steroids top the list 
with uh, boldenone known being the most commonly detected uh, during uh, the test and amphetamines are definitely stimulants and furosemide is a uh, diuretic which is uh, used in weight category sports where uh, it uh, causes dehydration and then they come into the lower weight category especially in case of uh, maybe where uh, boxing and taekwondo or games like that so uh, but of course no like not the least like uh, dr uh, uh, nishit uh, mentioned now even the ayurvedic formulations are uh, not spared ayurvedic and homeopathy definitely has stood the test of time but then uh, since we are uh, in the uh, allopathy age where every formulation has a name and uh, uh, it is being listed but herbal formulations do not really have those particular chemical components now uh, just a few uh, uh, things to mention here now these are the organ organoleptics that are uh, in the herbal formulations but then if you look at the effect it has an aphrodisiac effect and then it is an uh, adapto immuno neuroendocrine modulator so which means that these are not just uh, uh, any chemical these are real chemicals which uh, act from uh, the central nervous system to the peripheral vascular system so definitely these are also things to be which are considered while uh, we are looking at uh, the doping scenario now okay so what is the problem with supplements now uh, since we know uh, most use supplements now about 40 to 70 okay in fact uh, the recent study says uh, even 90% of athletes use supplements but the problem is uh, uh, most do not know why they are using it and uh, they try to source it from the gray market because uh, uh, based on hearsay Uh, thinking that it gives them an edge over the other uh, competitor who is using a branded substance and about one in four supplements are adulterated with a prohibited substance and 80% of it uh, does not comply to the uh, things uh, that are mentioned on the label okay so let's say it's just a whey protein with a fat burn it might also contain uh, Uh, an anabolic steroid uh, as an adulterant so the anabolic steroid uh, gets detected in the doping so that is the problem with supplements now many uh, supplements also come up with uh, third party certifications uh, bscg being the most uh, common which uh, stands for banned substances controlled group but uh, i mean these are also uh, the marketing gimmicks that are used by supplement companies to market their product but any mention of any of these third party certifications does not hold good in the uh, court of arbitration of sport or the uh, wada appeal panel uh, so these are potentially invalid when it comes to the doping scenario so now uh, the dictums uh, for prevention of doping through uh, nutrition supplements is uh, the athletes need to realize okay when we say realize the athletes need to uh, understand that uh, the food uh, cannot be replaced by supplements and supplements can be adulterated and every supplement is a potential cause of an anti doping rule violation and there should be a uh, real reason for supplementation okay now uh, this is where uh, things like uh, dna testing definitely like uh, we have the sports genomics that comes into the picture so we are increasingly prescribing sports genomics for detection of uh, certain uh, nutrient deficiencies and also the response of uh, the carbohydrate load or the protein load uh, of as nutrition and the athletes also need to recognize now recognize when it's a, when we say recognize it is about recognizing the fact that any presence of uh, an adulterant is uh, that they are only responsible for in the court of law 
and they also need to learn to recognize a uh, few common uh, adult trends that are possible possible when i say possible now um, now they can even go through the prohibited list uh, that dr nishit uh, mentioned uh, like uh, it is available in the month of september or october which uh, uh, every year which is uh, which comes into force from january of the subsequent year so they can definitely look up for the new substances and then how the names uh, look like and then uh, uh, try to identify the same on the label and that is what they recognize is about and of course the real way that uh, we can curb nutritional sub supplement related doping is to definitely reduce the uh, use of uh, supplements per se so that is the solution now there are various things that can be done at different levels to curb uh, uh, the doping issues now we are all here to uh, understand what this is all about and uh, to curb the use of uh, i mean to reduce the doping load uh, on our country and the world so now there are a few do's and don'ts now in the at the governmental level and the at the organizational level now we really don't have an established criteria for supplement use so the moment the kid is on the track uh, parents come and ask us does he need the protein does he need a multivitamin uh, does he need uh, bcwa and what are the effects and so on so do we really have a criteria for supplement use so no first thing is we don't even have a, a medical panel to decide such criteria now uh, the first part of uh, the athlete going onto the field is a medical screening and which also includes the blood and uh, biochemistry panel so where we can also identify the nutritional deficiencies the athlete currently has and then establish a criteria for supplement use and none of the panels these days at least not at uh, the basic uh, uh, federation level there are no sports medicine doctors or nutritionists who are a part of the medical panel now the organizations uh, no there were questions like um uh, uh, okay does uh, the indian government uh, approve a few uh, companies and uh, all of it so at the organization level the, uh, the federations or the uh, olympic committees can uh, collaborate with supplement manufacturers to ensure good manufacturing practices uh, so that it is addressed at the uh root cause then of course blacklisting brands which are found to be adulterated uh that is definitely the next step and of course we need stringent laws and punishments for blacklisted brands now we also need to establish local laboratories to ensure hello am i audible yes sir you are audible please continue yeah i'm having a lot of disturbance from the other side i think somebody is unmuted okay so we also need to establish local laboratories as of now we have wada accredited laboratories which are uh, really hard to find now we have only one in our country which is ndtl but uh, there can be local laboratories which are uh maybe definitely less equipped but then uh, uh more frequent to find where the athletes can reach out to ensure uh that the chemical composition of their product is same so now these are huge things which involve a lot of investment and a lot of uh, public policy changes uh so this is at the organizational level and of course back the athlete and the coach with evidence research and education now uh, there is absolutely uh, very less awareness okay uh, now uh, i don't want to name our organizations but then uh, being in this field for about uh, 10 years uh, i can tell you that we are not doing enough it is not just about testing and taking up the athlete for uh, uh, 
I mean, uh, getting a sanction for an ADRV, but then we also need to appraise the athlete about the ill effects and then how uh, maintaining a proper nutrition and scientific training can definitely uh, reduce the need for doping and uh, incidences and then in our case, nutritional supplements. And, and we need to appraise our coaches with uh, scientific uh, evidence that keeps coming up from time to time. Uh, maybe in the form of uh, short-term courses and few things like that. Then at the level of the coach, yes, again, at the level of the coach, we need an established criteria for talent identification. So you pick the wrong talent. Now, again, I would again stress the need for sports genomics here, which is virtually non-existent in our country. Now, uh, I don't know how many of us are aware there is an ACN3 uh, gene, which uh, is... Uh, coding for the uh, type 2 fibers for sprint uh, performance. So whether they the athlete has an ACTN gene uh, or not, uh, it helps us uh, establish whether the athlete is fit for uh, sprint running or long distance running at the time of talent identification. So it's that we don't groom the wrong talent and then try to do some uh, jugad at the Indian level. Okay, so that is one thing. Okay, so second thing would be to seek medical help to identify reasons for poor performance. So no, anywhere a poor performance is identified, okay, then the at the level of the coach, okay, they can they are not trained to think that there may be a medical problem uh, underlying, so which can be corrected and which needs to be treated uh, so that the performance can improve. Okay, so now this uh, medical reasons can be from, there can be a congenital cause or it can be an acquired cause, it can be a nutritional cause, it can be a temporary or a permanent cause. Unless the coach works with the doctor, okay, the, the reasons are never really identified. Now, one thing that uh, really needs to be done and in a very simple and effective manner is to serially monitor the blood and body composition. Okay, so now one simple test like lipid profile uh, tells us whether the athlete is in fact uh, consuming anabolic steroids. Okay, so normally we have a set criteria for the uh, LDL levels and the HDL levels. When the, there is an intake of uh, uh, the anabolic steroids, so the levels get skewed. Okay, where, where it says skewed, the HDL levels severely go down, the LDL level shoots up, and we can definitely predict uh, or get an insight that the athlete is using such substances. And of course, body composition. Now, uh, uh, when uh, we look at uh, things like stimulants, uh, which are, I mean, clenbuterol, which is used like a fat burner, and of course, the anabolic steroids. Now, when we serially monitor body composition, which is uh, basically the body fat percentage and the muscle percentage, if uh, we serially monitor it, if there is a spike, Okay, so we usually know the trend for one particular athlete. If there is a spike, okay, definitely that indicates uh, that the athlete may have consumed uh, the banned substances and definitely ensure scientific coaching methodology and work with the nutritionist for optimal uh, nutrition, both to prevent disease, reverse disease and uh, optimize health and also to optimize the uh, performance it can be it is it is a very simple procedure but uh, it is mostly ignored and of course make active recovery a part of training okay so when we say active recovery so there are so many modalities okay um, i mean it can be just swimming or cryotherapy and uh, it can be sauna, steam bath, massage, even music therapy, aroma therapy. These days, there are more things that are available commercially than at the national level because there is a lot of investment in the private sector, which uh, is uh, which prompts the uh, recreational athletes to get those uh, services than at the national level. And of course, uh, set a realistic goal, which is achievable. So if an athlete starts today, maybe he is not ready for uh, the upcoming Olympics, but then he may be ready for the 2024 or even the 2028 uh, Olympics. So uh, getting uh, deciding on when the athlete should peak is a part of realistic goal setting. And yes, the, the most important thing is put the athlete's health first. 
so and not uh, the win or the uh, triumph should not be at the cost of uh, the athlete's health because you're not only spoiling the uh, the athlete's career but also uh, his or her life and at the athlete's level i mean uh, pardon me eliminate the coach's part of it there so at the athlete's level so uh, the athlete has to realize that uh, he or she is the one responsible for any substance that is found inside the body irrespective of how it entered okay it may be intentional it may be non intentional so i mean we get hurt more so if it's non intentional so uh, the athlete has to take the responsibility and uh, in these days in the internet era so there is a lot of material lot of uh, books to read and lot of uh, support uh, that helps us recognize the prohibited substances and they shouldn't rely on the uh, friends for advice about uh, nutritional supplements so there are trained people who are who spent uh, decades of uh, their life uh, training for it and then working on it to provide such advice and of course definitely do the research on the internet to find out uh, to what what is good what is bad but the ultimate authority uh, should be the person who's trained and the most important thing here is to source the supplement from licensed sources okay and not from the gray market and consult a doctor and a nutritionist team to get the best things about nutrition okay your nutrition may be 95% it can replace 95% of your supplements so you might not really need one uh, at, at all and uh, as mentioned earlier the serial body composition and bl- uh, blood profiling provides insight both to the athlete the organization and the coach as well and the worst case scenario would be to not use the supplements at all and not get caught because it is very easy to uh, adulterate the supplements than the food so this is uh, what i have to say so this is where my references are and we are open to questions if there are any sir one question is there yes in the sir in chat box asked by gorob seran his question is why alcohol is not banned till now uh just a minute alcohol sir let me just get the question please is not banned till till now it is his question why is alcohol not banned till now so uh, i am not sure if i should answer the question so alcohol is not banned till now because there are uh, no good effects of alcohol there are no single good effect of alcohol except that it may help you sleep better so there is nothing good about alcohol so it is not banned till now okay thank you sir this is the one question i have all right thank you thank you sir for your valuable speech you have learned a lot thank you sir thank you so much escort escort sir mm, thank you so much sir thank you for thank the you. your inspiring speech thank your you. message is exactly what we needed to hear now thank you so much uh, so much sir thank you so much now our next speaker is mrs charu kogga madam is there charu madam is there or not dr mukaji charu charu madam is there or not i i think madam is not there so now i invite Dr. Anirban Mishra for his concluding speech. Dr. Anirban Mishra, Assistant Professor UCTC, he is a 
assistant professor of physical education and also a background with physiology and sports medicine mr mishra please for your concluding speech am i audible sir yes you okay sir at first i uh, very much uh, thanks to our principal sir dr sachin gobida sir and uh, his course sir our colleagues kishor sir and all the dignitaries of this session uh, as because i have no such type of particular topic i want to conclude whatever uh, we got throughout this session at first uh, our um, keynote speaker dr manobendra bhattacharya sir uh, at first i want to uh, synchronize all the things what i uh, we got to the this uh, webinar i want to <coughs> mention first dr manobendra sir and dr nishit kaur sir ready dr nishit ranjan choudhury sir uh, throughout their discussion we got the historical background why doping is used and what time we get so uh, keynote address and uh, dr nishit ranjan choudhury sir his topic is different doping substances in sports he mentioned and 800 bc in greek and roman teachers and then after we got the dope word from the south africa and dope from the dutch word dope from the dutch word dope is the alcoholic beverage from grapes skin used by zulu warriors to enhance their power and and battle and synchronizedly he is mentioned his speaker we got 800 bc and then 18 Hundred and eighty-six cyclics, and then eighteen hundred ninety-six morphine. He mentioned the one dope substances. Now, whatever we found throughout the historical background, he mentioned throughout eighteen hundred and two, and then now. And World Anti-Doping Agency is the agency established in nineteen ninety-nine. and his headquarter is montreal olympic canada more than 192 countries and more than 570 sporting organization have been signed with wada world anti doping agency wada has brought 25.5 million budget share equally by the member of government and the ioc india has high drug and low medal he mentioned his speech india has got his highest number of medal uh, highest number of failure dope test internationally in the year 2010 103 indian sports person including jumpers failed to in dope test in in the year of 2011 to 2 121 test positive while more than 130 have the failed in 2012 at the national school game levels under 16 in the delhi we have found 11 out of 81 sample corrected test positive banded through which included three wrestler three weightlifter and five boxer the weight lifting federation of india has suspended twice by the international body actually why we combat doping test for sports why doping is so much important for us actually doping threatens the athlete health it also threatens integrity of sports athletes are model for the many youngers why do athlete take drugs ignorance about drugs <clears throat> amateurism or professionalism drug a mask for winning 
fame and fortune to cope up with the stress and injuries praise from peers coach support pressure from coach support staff family members and media actually wada published his listed drug in every years wada revised the prohibited list annually actually he is mentioned the revised list published on the 1st october every year and comes into the three months later that from the following 1st january of each and every years actually he is mentioning the category of branded drugs uh, as follows one a b c d in the a category substances and methods prohibited at all times in and out of competition substances and methods prohibited in competition substances prohibited in particular sports a specific substances which is not actually used this particular events substances and method prohibited in an out of competition actually mention s2 s5 that is in the category of s1 non approved substance s1 anabolic agent s2 peptide hormone growth factors and related substances s3 beta blockers agonist and s4 hormones metabolic modulators and s5 category comes the diuretics and other masking agent method and m1 method category manipulation of blood and blood component and m2 chemical and physical manipulation and m3 in comes under the gene doping substances method prohibited in competition that is s1 category to s5 non approved substance anabolic agent and peptide hormones growth factor related to substances beta blockers hormone and metabolic modulators diuretics and etc that is s6 category is comes under the stimulant s7 category narcotics and s8 cannabolism and s9 glucocorticoids at all in the next speaker he mentioned the what kind of the procedure we have taken during the doping sample collection procedure dr kiran kulkarni sir he mentioned actually there is two type of collection procedure is there one is from the urine and another from the blood he mention in the collection and details uh, through the urine collection procedure he mention details at first we <coughs> receive the urine and in competition out of competition and target testing he mention the three very good different points sir we are very enriched your speaking lecture overnight in case of performance compliments write about the information online and outline by letter dope sampling collection at first we notification and factoring notification for the dope click and others containing 90 ml of urine at first we uh, category in the two type one a and b a is red bottle and another blue is b bottle in the at first uh, 30 ml of pure poured into the b bottle and 60 ml of poured in the red bottle checking specific gravity sampling whatever we checking feeling like the doping controlling them selling sealing them these are the procedure you have mentioned i have to try to conclude in specifically sample to the laboratory Uh, here in the India, you have mentioned NTT L in uh, New Delhi. Uh, if we not go through the B sampling procedure, as because if A is negative, then we go do not go through the A and B sampling. If 
uh, A sampling is positive, and we then go through the B sampling procedure. We will only analyze in case of sample has been found in positive. Sample will be announced after the request of the athlete from the sports federation. And you have uh, also mentioned the athlete representative or athlete itself is present during the sampling procedure of B. Not explain personally. <clears throat> These are the concluding section. And the last but not least, sir, Dr. Bharat Kumar B, sir, he has mentioning the five. I think five category of nutritional supplement. What are the problem? A vicious cycle, a most common and most common vitamin C, vitamin B, protein, calcium we have found. And the most common prohibited substance in the according to the uh, nature of the event, that means bodybuilding, track and field, all are specifically you have mentioned. Thank you, sir. Herbal formation. That means a homeopathic substance and other samloka and gulgul you have mentioned in your performance lecture. The problem with the supplement, 40 to 70 percent of our supplement are they are used in the various games. Athletes are used. 10 to 15 their prohibited substance are used. 80 percent do not use his prohibited lease third party certificate. So realize, recognition, and reduce. These are the mentioned. And you are categorized the do and do not. Uh, at first, you are mentioned the organization. The organization category, what are the, money? that means doctor, nutrition, and supplement, co collaboration with the supplement manufacturing procedure, blacklisted the black branded. And you have all the things that is the extra. And do not, according to the coach, at first we have to uh, collect the right person or right athlete for the right games. That means that is you are emphasized on the particular event that is uh, talent identification. And you are emphasized on the scientific coaching, focus on the optimum nutrition, whatever we are trying to uh, take at, at first. Uh, if I go through the uh, bodybuilding purpose, we are intake much more protein and others. You have tried to explain, make active recovery and part. And in all cases, these are the fundamental things. Yeah, at, in case of uh, training, procedure, and others, we have to take recovery, much more recovery, and go through the next event. Realistic goal. Uh, we are, have we set our goal according to our capability and feasibility. Don't uh, unrealistic thinking put athlete at first uh, the health concern and do not uh, according to athlete and coach realistic think responsibility for the substance that are found recognition at first recognize what is are the prohibited substance do not use for the particular games and others do not really they are friends and activities that's all from the concluding session and i take charges and to Dr. Parsat, please go through the. Thank you, sir. Before going to the uh, keynote uh, address, I have an announcement that in this uh, uh, international conference, our chief guest was Professor Shoposachi Mukherjee, Vice Chancellor of LNCP Gwalior. Due to the infection of COVID 19, he is now in quarantine in a hospital. And that's why he is unable to join in this uh, conference. So we pray God for his early and speedy recovery for that. And our one more resource speaker is there. Uh, she is just joining. So we have to wait five minutes for him, for her. Thanks a lot. After that, we can go for this um, uh, keynote speak. We have to wait five minutes for her. We, I have just made a call with, uh, and. Uh, Conversation is made through phone, so we have to wait five minutes for her. Please bear with us.
हेलो Dr. Jonathan Paul, you can proceed for the vote of thanks. After that, Madam, if Madam joins, then she will proceed. Dr. Gopal Chandra Paul. Dr. Paul, please inform Dr. Gopal Chandra Paul to join. And deliver his vote of thanks. After that, Madam will join. Yes, Gopal Babu. After Gopal Chandra Pal, you are here. Can you hearing my what? Hello. Hello. Ah. Babu, please ah. proceed. Ah. Now, Gopal ah. Chandra Pal, IQAC coordinator of Union Christian Training College. is giving his speech good afternoon everyone all guest chief guest and special guest all resource persons and speakers all participant and audience also in this pandemic situation today 25th day of march 2021 is a special memorable day in the history of our college we are very proud and honored to host this international e conference on doping in sports organized by union christian training college barhampur murshidabad west bengal india in collaboration with international association of physical education and sports and physical education foundation of india west bengal chapter national sports promotion organization on behalf of the organizing committee i thank you very much to dr juelsan m santos president iapes for your inaugural address thank you more dr sashim kobiraj thakur principal ucitc for welcome address i also thank to chief guest professor s mukherjee acting vice chancellor ln up gwalior thank you to guest of honor dr pijush join national secretary pfi special guest dr sudarshan bishwas honorable president of pfi west bengal chapter and former faculty member of our college 
Dr. D. P. Shahu, Secretary of PEFI West Bengal Chapter. Many thanks to keynote speaker, Dr. Manavendra Bhattacharya, former senior scientific of officer, Sports Medicine, Sai N S N I S, Patiala, due to your excellent speech. Thank you to Dr. Kiran Kulkarni. Consultant Sports and Exercise Medicine Specialist, AFC and Doping Control, for your valuable speech on doping sample collection procedure. Thank you to Dr. Nishit Ranjan Choudhury, President, WBU Association of Sports Medicine, of your excellent speech on different doping substance in sports. Dr. Bharat Kumar B, sports medicine specialist, Nutri nutrition, nutritional uh, supplement and doping speech, your inspiring speech. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Charu Pragga absent. So thank you to Mr. Prashun Chatterjee, Joint Secretary FEPI, West Bengal Chapter. Thank you for excellent announcing Dr. Shubhubrato Kaur, HOD, Department of Physical Education, UCTC. Thank you to Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, Associate Professor in Physical Education, UCTC, and Organizing Secretary of this e-conference. Thank you for concluding speech, Dr. Onirban Misro, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, UCTC. Also, thanks to our all colleague, teaching and non-teaching staff of our college, and many thanks to all participants and audience. Now, I take microphone, Dr. S. Kaur. Thank. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Paul, for your vote of thanks. And it is encouraging to us. And now, uh, yes, I, I have already uh, uh, the, uh, the link. Zoom link I have given. Already given. No, no, I have given you the write up of the program. Program schedule I have already given in the work. Madam is unable to join right now. I think she will take more time. So uh, I think she will not join today. So we missed her. So with this, we are going to conclude our today's program. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, all the participants, all the resource persons, all everybody, those who are participating about here, in the, here through this virtual platform and gathered the knowledge and information regarding the doping in sports. Thank you, everybody. With this, we are going to close our today's uh, conference. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kishore. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Piyush Jain.